The 93X half ass Morning Show podcast is sponsored by Standard Heating and Air Conditioning. Install a new furnace and AC combo and save up to $3,000 with manufacturer and utility rebates along with Standard Heating's discount. Visit standardheating.com. The 93X half ass Morning Show. 93X. Professor, is there a problem? Um, yeah. There's a gentleman in your audience who looks strikingly similar to Beavis from the cartoon Beavis and Butthead. You really never watched Beavis and Butthead when you were a teenager? No, I was pretty, so I was going to parties and hooking up. Hey, wait a minute. You two look kind of familiar. Ain't you them kids that have been whacking off in my tool shed? Uh. <laughs> well, I'll be danged. That's them two kids that have been whacking in my camper. Showtime! Man, Wednesday. Stupid, stupid Wednesday. Welcome to the program here, the half-assed, uh, whatever we call it. I gotta admit, though, it's pretty cool to start the show with an ancient Beavis and Butthead clip. I refuse to watch King of the Hill out of respect for Mr. Anderson. <laughs> oh, I enjoyed King of the Hill. I, I couldn't do it. watched that last night. I'm back, back on it. I couldn't do it. The Beavis and Butthead television show featured Mr. Anderson, the old timer in the neighborhood who was totally confused by the behavior of Beavis and Butthead, and they were always doing something disgusting in his tool shed or in his camper. Uh, I loved Mr. Anderson so much. The first time I saw that King of the Hill program, I said, well, that's not right. You can't just take Mr. Anderson and call him uh, uh, Clint Hill Hill or what what, what was it? Hank Hill. You can't just do that. That was wrong. (laughs) And so I, I boycotted King of the Hill for its entirety. <laughs> well, now that we're, you know, 30 years or whatever away from that, maybe you could give it another shot. I think <laughs> I, yeah, I, I do think you'd like that show if you could get past that. I, I hear what you mean. I thought the same thing. Like, well, wait a minute. That's Mr. Anderson. It, I, it was disrespectful to the character. It was, uh, it was cheap, sleazy, and wrong. And so I took that stand. And uh, Josh, as reasonable as your request is, now that 30 years have gone by, as reasonable as that request is, you know what? I still think I'm going to take it to my grave. (laughs) I'm going to take it to my friggin' grave. How about this? Watch at least the first season of the new Mike Judge's Beavis and Butthead. I think especially that first season, (laughs) you're going to really like. And this is my fault. You've been pumping this for a long, long time. Watch the new Beavis. I I don't know how to find it. I don't know where it is. Paramount Plus, I think. It was Comedy Central. Yeah, it, uh, I'll, I'll try again. Uh, maybe I'll put the friggin' wife on the task because she knows how to operate those televisions. But there you go. This is a, I mean, many many times you've you've brought this up, and I mean, I mean to honor your request and find the the latest of Beavis, and I can never find it or figure out how to turn it on. Well, uh, I know I know you'd love it, and, and uh, well, I again, loved that show so much back in the early uh, what they called the 1990s. Make sure she, your wife, make sure she starts just season one. Season two wasn't as good. So I, I cheated I want on you her again yesterday. Well, I thought she got back yesterday. <laughs> oh, you, oh, she got back last Not night. Last night. What were you saying? Season one? Season one. That's what you want to watch. Mike Judge's Beavis and Butthead. The new version, season one. Yeah. Okay. I was angry with Mike Judge for quite a while over that. <laughs> Mr. Anderson, Cliff Hill, I uh, I thought that was friggin' wrong. Mr. Anderson cracked me up. Well, the reason we started with it is there's a, um, there's a, a bit that was really popular on Saturday Night Live over the weekend. It's a visual gig. That's why I haven't played any audio from it. Just today I played because we've heard so much about it. Sure. But where there was, uh, they're doing like a, they're interviewing this guy, a Kenan Thompson, in like a serious setting, and uh, I forget the topic, doesn't really matter. But they're uh, talking to him, and he gets distracted because there's a guy sitting behind the interview lady who looks exactly like Beavis from Beavis and Butthead, <laughs> like a real life Beavis. Could and it, you uh, dial him up on yeah, your computer? It was Ryan Gosling, right? That's isn't that the actor? <laughs> yep, mm-hmm. yep, who played Beavis? And okay. so yeah, he's. The short, the shirt, the shorts, the hair, everything, the nose. He had a prosthetic nose on that was a little bit bigger. Okay, here's the deal. I'm excited to, uh, I'm not going to look right away, Josh. I'm excited, though, to see this real-life human being who supposedly looks a lot like 
the cartoon character Beavis because I hung out at St. Cloud State with a dude who looked a <laughs> hell of a lot like Beavis. And and strikingly, that's stupid, uh, surprisingly enough, he also kind of talked like him. He had uh, kind of a voice, you know, kind of like this, right? And and his, uh, his stories had uh, big gaps in his stories, you know, kind of <laughs> like Beavis couldn't ever... Collect his thoughts. Yeah, so put a coherent thought together. I want to. Pu- I want to put this image you're about to show me, Josh, of Ryan Gosling as Beavis up against the dude I knew from St. Cloud. So whenever you're ready, so you can- yeah, I'll show you that. But also, was it Mikey Day? Mikey it, Day plays so Butthead. He plays Butthead, and he's even better. Uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> so here's a side by side. And so in the bit, they've never met each other. They're not friends. They've never even heard of Beavis and Butthead. Okay, <laughs> but yet they look just like. Yeah. Uh, that's pretty good. Yeah. <laughs> that's pretty good. That's pretty good. The way Mikey Day did, like he, he had like his his gum showing, you know, kind of like Butthead does. Like his li- his lip is pursed. And he's up got a little braces bit. on. He's got yeah. braces on. Yeah, <laughs> just fantastic. Yeah, they did a good job on that. <laughs> oh, Beavis and Butthead fans are texting in to the show. Well, first off, here's uh, your friendly neighborhood garbage man who's texted in. Our number is six five one nine eight nine ninety three ninety three. Did I get the number right? Yeah, I believe so. Okay, good. I I had a terrible feeling there that I gave out the wrong number. Your friendly neighborhood garbage man texted in to say that I will watch King of the Hill right after I'm done watching Modern Family. Yeah. Yeah. You got a long list. I think, uh, I I don't know which one you'd like better. Probably Modern Family. If you, should you ever watch it? Mm, Left lane driving in, no, what does this say? Left lane driving in Wisconsin, Jesus. Uh, He loved the cornholio bit. Oh, yeah. (laughs) That was always fantastic. Yeah, that was good. Absolutely. Spent a lot of time kind of interesting or ironic or whatever the word might be that me and the Big Al sat side by side on my filthy couch giggling at Beavis and Butthead back in the day, who usually on their television show were sitting side by side <laughs> on a filthy couch. Yeah. I never watched the movie. As much as I like the show, Beavis and Butthead Do America, never watched it. Never saw it oh, all, yeah. the, all the way through. It's pretty you've good. you've seen parts of it? Just parts of it. I think I've just seen parts of it, too. When they made an appearance on David Letterman to promote <laughs> their movie Beavis and Butthead Do America. That was quite hilarious. That was good. I don't know if you can find any clips from that. I'm, yeah, I'm trying to see if I have any of that. But you know, yeah, when, when Beavis and Butthead Do America came to cable television, I spent a little bit of time with it, but there was something that I maybe I was being snobbish about it because I was so in love with their MTV show, the fact that they, you know, the format was altered in the movie. They're on an airplane, they're doing all these things that they would normally never do in their cable television show that troubled me. They end up in Vegas, yeah. Yeah, right, that, I just thought, ah, I don't know, and and I, and the parts that I watched, I really didn't enjoy because they were so out of their setting, It, it didn't, you know, that's overthinking the process, but, you know, it look at the source I, I i'm the guy who just said i refuse to watch king of the hill out of respect for mr <laughs> anderson so yeah i it never really grabbed me but when they went on letterman to promote the movie that was and if i remember right i could be wrong about this david letterman i don't think he wanted any part of it i, I thought i heard that he did not want to do the interview because, of course, he would have to be speaking to nobody, and then they would animate it and later. That's the word I'm looking yeah. for. Animate it later. Like he, I, it, I could see him not wanting to do right, that. Right, right. So I think maybe if I remember right, if you're watching um, Letterman interviewing Beavis and Butthead on his on his television show, what year would that have been? Like '94 or whatever. Uh, he doesn't look terribly excited about it, but uh, God dang. Yeah, I've never seen a single episode of that show. Oh, well, there you go. Yeah, their their voice has always bothered me too much. You're too young for it. Yeah, mm-hmm. I never got the humor. You would have if you would have been 19 years old in uh, 1992 or whatever. <laughs> you certainly would have. Oh, yeah, and it was just fun watching them absolutely destroy music videos. Yes. Yeah. That, was, that was the best yeah. part. To the point where there are times I felt bad yeah. for the artist. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> 
I also, uh, somebody texted in, what about Beavis and Butthead do the universe? Uh, I did see that one from what a couple years back. Was that a movie? Yeah. yeah. Oh, I, I have no memory of that. They yeah, went that, into space. <laughs> yeah, that was okay. And the the season one of the new uh, uh, Mike Judge's Beavis and Butthead was good. See, I'm like, I'm, I'm like that... That music fan who never wants the band to evolve in any way, right? You know, Meta- yeah. sold out, man. I'm like that Metallica fan who's still upset that they cut their hair. Um, I just want Beavis and Butthead on that filthy couch watching music videos and then periodically uh, terrorizing Mr. Anderson or falling in love with Todd uh, <laughs> or picking on Stewart. You know, when they when they sold out when they evolved a little bit it, it bothered me those guys tried so hard to score they did and had so much trouble scoring they wanted to score they really wanted to score and you loved like you just said josh you loved when they would tear apart the bands in the music video <laughs> yeah and, and so did i um because they would usually go after a band that i hated you know but there was one episode of beavis and butthead where i was greatly offended they were watching the music video for Iron Maiden, Be Quick or Be Dead. And they're watching it, and I'm sitting there watching them watch the video, hoping they're going to say something like, you know, Iron Maiden totally rule. You know, and, and instead, <laughs> if I remember right, Butthead said to Beavis, and I'd, I don't do this very often anymore, you know, every swing and D in town had a Beavis and Butthead impersonation back in the early night. I, I certainly did. I want to give it my best shot. I know I did the voice a couple days ago off air. Um, so they're watching Iron Maiden be quick or be dead, which is an incredibly cool song. Of course, it's Iron Maiden. And Butthead turned to Beavis and said, uh, <laughs> Heavy metal's come a long way, Beavis. That pissed me off. <laughs> that pissed me off. <laughs> they're going after Iron Maiden? Well, you guys got balls, I said to myself. More anxiety than hair, Jesus said he just realized Beavis and Butthead were the first YouTube reactors, basically. Yeah, right? Uh (laughs) Now you see so much of that. Uh I've even, so my son has even watched, how do I put this? Reaction videos to reaction videos. Oh, that's taking it to a whole new level. (laughs) Commenting on someone's commentary on a different video. Wow. I have gone down that route. Reaction videos. Some of that stuff is absolutely awful, and the people couldn't be any less interesting, but there are a few out there that I've found on YouTube who are really funny and really genuine. It can be a, it can be a cool experience to watch someone catch on to a band or a particular song that's been around forever and ever, and it just... It, it throws them. You know what I mean? Yeah. Do you? So you're? T- are you talking about? Because I like these too, where you have a singing coach watch an Iron Maiden song for the first time. They're that, not familiar with a certain artist. That's They're, another gimmick that I enjoy watching. I brought that up to Wapple mm-hmm. yesterday. Yesterday, uh, and I know what some of you are going to say who were listening to the show yesterday at this time. You're going to go again with the Rush and the Getty Lee. <laughs> but I'm on a Rush and Getty Lee kick. So yesterday, I was watching. Uh, after we got off the air, sitting in our little lobby here, I was watching a vocal coach and a gorgeous lady, by the way, and a very intelligent, obviously very skilled lady when it comes to singing and music and this and that. She was, for the first time, listening to The Spirit of Radio by Rush and commenting on Getty Lee's vocals. Yes, I've watched those videos too, and those can be awesome. The first reaction video I ever watched is my only experience to this uh, viral video, the two girls, one cup. I've never watched the actual video. I've managed to avoid it all these years. But I've watched some of the reaction videos, and that was enough for me. (laughs) Even some of those were rough. I have not tried that yet. You've brought that up before. Two girls, one cup reaction videos. And this, you can, can I find this on YouTube? Well, you, at least you could before. I'd imagine it's still on there. Okay. And they showed like somebody's aunt or grandma or something, and they're just like, oh, what is this? There used oh, to be a ton oh. of them. <laughs> Are we, how old is the two girls, one cup video now? Gosh. How many years have we been talking about that video? 2007 w- w- or 8. Say- I was in college, so yeah. Oh, but oh really? You were in college? Mm-hmm. Yeah, it so, looks like 2007. Oh, he, he, so how many years ago was that? Damn near tw- uh 17? Yep. Oh, Jesus. That's crazy. Pickle Rick, he just texted in about um, 
those two girls, one cup, and wait, wait, have you seen the two girls and a cup full of blue waffles video? Maybe he's joking. Oh, stop or, that. Is that, that. Is that a real thing? I don't think that ever happened. I've never heard I, of it. That's the first I've heard of that. But yeah, that's reaction videos are fun because it's fun to watch another person just be wowed or thrown by of course especially a song or a band that you love you know to see it's almost like you're living vicariously through them rediscovering the band all over again because you remember how thrown you were when you first heard a certain band or a certain song if there's a couple of songs that i've seen on youtube where just average schmucks are reacting um where i've really seen people you know have to hit the pause button and say jesus what am i listening to this is incredible if there's two songs uh i could uh give you as examples it's i've watched people react for the very first time to hearing silent lucidity by Queensryche, where Dude. they they cannot believe just how interesting and wonderful and I remember where I was the first time I heard that song. There's, you know, there's certain songs like that. I was mowing the yard, had my headphones on, and all of a sudden the song came on. I thought, that is incredible. Yeah. <laughs> People reacting to Jeff Tate's voice and, and how beautiful and, and there's a word that is sweeping, you know. <laughs> um, you know, if you open your mind for me. And the people go, what the hell? Uh, the other song, and it's on the higher end of the scale, I've watched people completely begin to cry um, or just be totally amazed by the Bee Gees song, Too Much Heaven, where people have to, they think it's fake. They think the vocals are fake. So I really, I, I get a kick out of that, where people go, those are those are men? You know what I mean? When you hear the Bee Gees kick into the, nobody gets to. That stuff can be a, a great, great, uh, I mean, of course, you know, it's a time suck. But it's a, it's a fun experience. Fargo Jesus watched two girls, one cup with a buddy, and his buddy barfed before he did. It sounds like they both did barf. <laughs> they both barfed. I never saw anybody throw up in those reaction videos, but it was very close, it appeared. I bet you those two girls, if they're still with us, <laughs> because if, you, if you're going to do that on video, God knows what other chances you might take in life, uh -huh. right? You know, if they're, two, if they're still with us, those two girls, they, they, they're probably sitting back on... 17 years has gone by <laughs> and people are still talking about us pooping in a cup. <laughs> Gross. And they're probably thinking, if only I had a dollar for every time somebody watched or talked about that video. <laughs> oh, shoot. Yeah, they'd be rich. Oh, yeah. Rich, rich, gross ladies. <laughs> oh, they could have all the cups they all the cups money could buy. <laughs> ah, man. I'd imagine the title helped. You know, it's just a catchy title. <laughs> yep. And once you find out what that is. <laughs> once you find out what's happening with the cup. <laughs> that sticks with you. That poor cup. Oh, we get... <laughs> yeah, I wonder what happened to that cup. <laughs> is, Somebody, it, is it a Hall of Fame somewhere? It's got to be in like a gallery of the odd somewhere. Yeah. Like in Ripley's some place deep in Germany. <laughs> it's at the Ripley's Believe It or Not Museum. <laughs> I do not believe this video. <laughs> Come on, kids. I'm going to show you a very famous cup today. <laughs> Somebody saved that cup, <laughs> rinsed it off, and displays it in their home to this day. So there you go. What else is going on, Cubby? Oh, I didn't know this was a thing. Someone just texted in and said, there are, there's so little I know about the internet. You know, I do, at times, I'll watch those reaction videos. I dig that. I explain that all to you. I, but there's so little that I know about what's out there. There are porn reaction videos? Well, what's the I, I'd imagine there the must the be, right? The reaction is you start touching yourself? I mean, this is yeah. oh, oh, geez, Jesus says there are porn reaction videos. That I've never heard of. It must be something pretty special going on screen, don't you think? Mm -hmm. Something mm -hmm. you're not expecting, kind of yeah. like the two girls, one cup vibe? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm sure it's. I don't think it's just you know two people doing it. Missionary. What the hell? What are you? What are you going to react to? But it might be funny listening to the descriptions. Have you ever listened to the audio descriptions of porn? No. No. You know, for uh, for blind folks, you know they'll say what's going on. Oh sure. It's entertaining. I bet. Yeah. Does I it, like. I does like... It get you going. Well, yeah. <laughs> I remember. Um, 
I remember you bringing that up a while back. Um, how does it work again, Josh? You just listen. Somebody's described. I, I've I actually. Um, Is it for the visually impaired? Yes. 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 Okay. Right. And they they say what's going on. They do it for movies as well. I've, sometimes I've done that for movies. Just kind of listened. It's interesting. Right. It's yeah. a different way to experience it, I for like, sure. I like uh, reading the comments sometimes on porn videos. <laughs> oh, oh, yeah, you God. mentioned that. You said the Pornhub comments are usually pretty funny. Oh, yeah, they're hilarious. They can, be, they can be a blast. Oh, yeah. Okay, here it is. Uh, Hot Mom Slayer knows who I'm talking about. The gorgeous gal who do, and very learned knows her stuff when it comes to vocals and singing and whatnot. Hot Mom Slayer knows what I'm talking about. The gorgeous gal who does reactions um, and critiques the vocals of singers um, is called the charismatic voice. Yeah, she's the one I've seen the most. Yeah. She's the one that pops up the most, uh, you know, when I'm on a YouTube rabbit hole. Yeah, and when she when she reacts to silent lucidity, she can't believe what she's hearing. And then there's others. Um, you know, first time dudes young dudes usually hearing judas priest you know hearing rob halford sing or ronnie james dio or we already mentioned jeff tate a couple times that's really fun only poops while punched in jesus said there's a youtube video or the youtube videos of comedians doing voiceovers for porn and it's hilarious i'll have to look that up <laughs> I <bet> that's good <laughs> i gotta get around to some of this stuff because i just don't know I just don't know. Did you see OG's Jesus? As he's texting a follow-up on no with a porn react. No, videos. I didn't see what he's talking about. What what he say this time? He said it's usually an established actress who critiques the acting and see, to see oh. if the women are faking or not. He said it's actually informative. <laughs> An established actress or actor will critique the acting. Okay, and then check to see if the orgasm was real. Yeah, ah. <laughs> that's hilarious friggin internet most of it is evil i wish it never would have come to be but if it's going to be here because of you psychos over there in the other room you young people you're the ones who made this internet thing happen if it's <laughs> gonna, it, you, you should apologize if it's gonna be here it, there might as well be some fun stuff on there that's the way i see it cubby Tool has some of the best reaction videos, this person says. Josh has no reaction to Tool. (laughs) (laughs) He doesn't. I am a Tool. You are not a Tool. I'm a Tool, though. That is true. (laughs) I was going to remain silent, but Nick jumped in there, and I had to agree Uh, with my pal. That is that. People are telling us, okay, you you can get on YouTube and watch, say, like a dude in Ireland... Uh, who has never put on a pair of hockey skates or, you know, has watched 10 seconds of hockey in his lifetime, you can watch him react to the uh, miracle on ice, you know, something like that. He's Mm. never even heard of it, right? Mm -hmm. That's that's great. I suppose, you know, we see or or play audio of a lot of those uh, sports fans watching their favorite team and something good or bad happens, like somebody's dad goes crazy or great-grandma passes out or something. <laughs> you see a lot of those. Some guy smashes his TV. Yeah. Yeah. It seems to be related or, or, you know, more about football mm-hmm. than in some of the other sports, but yeah, some of those are pretty good. Pulls the TV off the wall and tries to put it in his toilet or yeah, something like that. Sticks the remote up his butt <laughs> out of frustration. Drinking well, since 7 a.m. <laughs> watching a, a 8 p.m. football game. Just a total train wreck. A lot of those ones now, you can tell that they know they're being filmed and they're kind of like going for it because they want the reaction. You know, they, oh, no, they, yeah. they, they don't of, they don't seem as natural as they were uh, when they first admit, started. They're almost all fake. Here's yeah. the sure. thing. Is a, some of them are fake, but the thing is, you can tell. I, I can tell every time if it's legit or not. Some of these people think they're great actors and they're terrible. Mm-hmm. You know, so, yeah, of course, there's fake ones out there. It's the Internet. Again, thank the young people over there, Josh, for the evils of the Internet. Yeah, <laughs> thanks, guys. <laughs> You're welcome. Wait, wasn't it your guys' age range that made the Internet? Someone in your age range made the internet? I think no. quite a bit older, actually. No. <laughs> so, two no. words for you. Suck it. <laughs> You're it did, wrong on all accounts. It didn't even come out until I was like a senior in high school. You're wrong yeah. on all accounts, Wapple. We're just using I'm not it. talking about the original internet where we sat there playing Pong with each other. I'm talking about the evil stuff that happens now. That is your fault. <laughs>
<laughs> Jesus. Try to turn it around on us. <laughs> We're the ones who gave you the good stuff. You turned it bad. <sighs> All right. I suppose we could... Oh, Jesus. Is it already that? It's 6.06? Mm-hmm. Feels like we just got started. It feels like we just got started. Well, uh, we might as well get her going for real. We got the stupid news coming up in a few minutes. You're a great crowd. We'll be right back on the Half Ass Morning Show. Half Ass Morning Show. They're loud. They lose control. They do their little circus act. They're a nuisance. 93X. Our experienced and certified technicians at Standard Heating have been trusted to keep our fellow Minnesotans comfortable and confident for over 90 years. We're ready to do the same for you, providing comfort you deserve since 1930. It is the triple savings spring sale at Standard Heating and Air Conditioning. Install a new furnace and AC combo and save up to $3,000 with manufacturer and utility rebates along with Standard Heating's discount. That's a trifecta. Visit standardheating.com. Just Capital is a nonprofit that tracks which companies are a force for good. Companies like Bank of America, which just earned the Just Capital seal. Bank of America is ranked number one for ongoing commitment to their workers with initiatives like Sharing Success, which awarded 97% of their teammates additional compensation, nearly all in stock. This is the program's seventh consecutive year, awarding more than $4.8 billion in total. Visit JustCapital.com to learn how a just business is a better business. Furnished by Just Capital. Stupid news on the Half-Assed Morning Show. It's on its way, the stupid news. I guarantee it. But first, got to deal with a couple of texts from our wonderful, wonderful listening audience. We were talking about a couple of television programs that are related. Beavis and Butthead and King of the Hill. Mike Judge, right? That's He's a man. He's the guy who wrote up the this and the that, and he did the voices for that person and this person. Uh, here's a message from Accounting Jesus. Um, he says, if you like watching an adult cartoon that will never make you laugh once, King of the Hill is for you. Uh-uh. Didn't he go on to say he's never seen it, though? Uh-huh. Uh, okay. <laughs> I was going to say, who doesn't love Bobby? Did he Bobby's say, always making you laugh. He, he said it, he, he never saw it? <laughs> I think so, yeah. <laughs> oh, I, I, I didn't catch that part. Uh, I never saw it. Yeah, like I said, in an odd stance... In defense of the Beavis and Butthead character, Mr. Anderson, I never watched King of the Hill because I hated the fact that the main character, Hank Hill, was basically just a younger version of Mr. Anderson. That that offended me, and so I never bothered tuning into the uh, Beavis and Butthead. Now, this text message comes from a listener by the name of Janelle Klein's side piece, Jesus. <laughs> He says he found a channel a day or two ago that plays Beavis and Butthead 24-7. Now, I don't know if he means a television channel or an internet. I don't know what he means. Have you ever heard of that? No. No. Yes, I have. Oh, wow. Is it television or stupid, evil internet? It could be television because if you... I have a Samsung TV and you can kind of like go to Samsung channels or LG channels and oh. they have like a bunch of channels of stuff like uh, uh, Hell's Kitchen. They'll have um, Conan, Conan O'Brien. Last Man Standing? I think they probably would. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, okay, I know so- what you're talking about, Waffle. They, yeah, they have, they even have like a whole channel for Tosh.0. Oh. Yes. Yep. Never saw it. So Janelle Klein's side piece, Jesus, isn't making this up. If uh, if uh, I ask around, maybe I'll be able to find this channel myself. Yeah. Um, wow. There, there was one that I got locked into, and it was the Bob Ross channel. Oh. Did I see that? I wanted to click on it. That's good. Not even lying. I would just get high and just watch it oh, for I hours. Bet. It was so fun. He, like, really blew up for a while there, yeah. didn't he? Well, and like, then, after his death, even. Yeah. Well, it was great because, I mean, out of nowhere, you're like, wow, look at that. You're like, <laughs> that is you're... a happy little tree. Yeah. <laughs> and then you're like, no, don't do that. You're totally ruining the picture. And then he totally changes it. And it's like, whoa. And then a squirrel comes out of his pocket. It's, it's like, what? Wait, he has a pocket squirrel? Yes. Who are we talking about? Bob Ross. <laughs> Never saw it. The Steel painter t- the afro on PBS. Never yeah. saw it. Steel Toe Jesus <laughs> even says mind. Vizio TVs have the channel where you can watch Bob Ross. Yes. It, it's awesome. Greatest channel of all. Metro Jesus said Samsung TV has a Baywatch channel. Whoa. All right. Something else we covered 
reaction videos on YouTube. I'm a fan. You know, there's good and bad. There are some people who are just morons, but there, there are some great individuals out there who have their own little YouTube set up and they do reaction videos. They'll watch videos and listen to songs that they've never heard before. And, you know, I specifically, of course, dial into hard rock and, and things like that. So it's fun to watch a 25-year-old or even someone could be a little bit older. They've never heard of, say, ACDC, and they watch and listen to Hell's Bells live for the very first time and to watch them go, damn, this stuff is incredible. I, I dig that. Now, I mentioned that one of my favorite songs um, or videos to watch people react to is Silent Lucidity by Queensryche because it's such an incredible song and, and you'll see people just thrown by what they're hearing. We've had it play out uh, here on our morning show. Since we brought it up, I got a text message from somebody in Michigan who says, I just listened to Silent Lucidity for the first time in my life. Huge Pink Floyd vibes and absolutely, absolutely that song is very Floyd-like. But this individual says, um, awesome, awesome song. Great. I love that. I love that you listened to it for the very first time. He says, unfortunately, I was driving and unable to film my reaction. I thought uh, not going in the ditch would be the best case scenario. Yeah, good, good call. call. Very good call. That's great that you uh, checked it out for the very first time. All right. On to today's stupid news report. For all you television wrestling fans, this here next headline sounds like a Jake Roberts bit that might have played out on an old episode of WWF Saturday Night's main event in 1987. Here's the headline. Man tried to rob a gas station by using a five-foot snake as a weapon. <laughs> WWF would have written it up. This is the way I picture it in 1987. WWF would have written it up so Macho Man Randy Savage and Miss Elizabeth are working behind the cash register together, right? They're mm -hmm. selling Slim Jims. And Jake Roberts comes in the door with his pet snake, Damien, and he'd up and rob Savage of all his Slim Jim money to cause him to lose his job at the gas station, which, of course, is owned by Ted DiBiase. <laughs> That's the way they would have played it out back in the day. Brilliant. But this real-life incident... Man tries to rob gas station with his pet snake as his primary weapon. This incident did play out in a wrestling hotbed, Memphis, Tennessee. Dude with the snake got himself arrested for that. He's a young 26-year-old fella called Reginald Cook, and he got himself charged with two counts of attempted aggravated robbery. Around 2 a.m. Monday morning, this Cook jerk... He walked into a Shell gas station located there on Elvis Presley Boulevard, mm. don't you know? He walks in there, just him, and he makes a purchase. Half hour goes by. He comes back into the store, and he demanded money from the register. But he has no weapon. And the cashier said, uh, no. <laughs> So he left. Another half hour goes by, and Cook comes back with a live five-foot snake wrapped around his neck. He also has a green backpack on him. He shouted at the cashier, Give me the effing money! While reaching inside his backpack, he was also kind of fingering around in his backpack. Again, snake around his neck, backpack, he's reaching into it, he screams, give me the effing money. Didn't go well for this uh, cook character. The cashier pulled out his own firearm. Yeah, if we were choosing our weapons, yeah. I'd take the firearm. <laughs> over, he thinks over the snake. And mm -hmm. the, but he's also got a backpack. Yeah, I don't, I don't consider the backpack a threat. Okay. So no money was taken and no one was injured. <laughs> and the cops took Dinkus into custody. They found, oh, here's what he had in his backpack, Josh. A railroad spike and a rock. Yeah, see, I would have <laughs> took the spike if I were him. 
over the snake. And the cops also took possession of the snake when they arrested the guy. I mean, I guess if someone's terrified of snakes, maybe they'll just say, whatever you do, don't throw that thing at me. Mm -hmm. Stay back. This brings up one of the greatest stories I ever remember discussing on this program in the 30 years or however long we've been involved in this nightmare. The dude who attacked his neighbor with a cat. (laughs) And I don't remember if it was his own cat or he just picked an angry stray cat up off the street as he was walking to his neighbor's house. Neighbor, knock at the door. Dude opens the door. And other dude throws an angry cat in his face. Terrifying. I love that one. I'll never forget that one as long as I live. And the cat's thinking, okay, how in God's name did I get involved in this uh, <laughs> this uh, property dispute or whatever? We're... Remember that one, Cubby? I do. This is from Ag Engineering Jesus. He said, a five-foot snake would have worked better than a gun if I was the teller. I'm out. Snakes, he says, <laughs> and then he shivers. Mm. Right at the end of his text, he shivered. Doesn't lo- oh, right. Sorry. At the end of my WWF uh, scenario from 1987, where uh, uh, Jake the Snake Roberts uh, robs Macho Man Randy Savage of all his Slim Jim money at the gas station by using his uh, pet snake, Damien. Um, Ted DiBiase, yes, owns the gas station. In the end, Jake Roberts would have been arrested by who? Big Boss Man? Man. Big Boss Man. Yes, thank you. A listener texted in, would Big Boss Man? Yes, he would be the one who would make the arrest for that crime. All right. And then here's this effing genius. Also a bit you might expect to see on television. In a place called, uh, how do you say this? Sandusky, Ohio. The local police arrested a man that was using a translator app to try and rob an effing bank. (laughs) I always forget about that app. Like a a damn babble comedy bit on Saturday Night Live. Used a translator app to try and rob an effing bank. Como se dice das dinero, por favor? Which means, can I have all your money, please? 20-year-old suspect. He's from Venezuela. He's the guy who tried to pull this off. Who was saying something? I was going to say, I didn't realize that was what it meant because it's been a while since seventh grade Spanish. See, I took it in ninth grade. Did you? I did. This happened on April 4th. A man, somebody called police saying there was a dude uh, up in the bank not talking to anyone and trying to get behind the counter. There's video of all this, of course. It's a bank. Banks keep an eye on you, shady bastards. In the video, the suspect is holding up his phone to the tellers. He keeps kind of playing with his phone and then holding it up in the teller's face. He did not speak English, and he was using a translator app to try and tell the tellers, get the money or put the money in the bag. Does it work like this? Do you say it into your phone and then it instantly speaks it out out of a speaker? I haven't used one, but I've seen videos of people doing it that way or typing it in. <laughs> okay, maybe this guy, it sounds like maybe he was typing it in. <laughs> I have um, the guy, there's a, a guy that has a tow truck and he's had to come and grab my car from me twice to do some minor details and... This guy is super French, like doesn't speak any English at all. And we always talk to each other with the the Translate app. Okay. And it is, it's so fun doing that back and forth with him. I'd like to try that. What's his name? Oh, I can't. I never asked him his name, actually. But um, the last time he came, he must have forgot that, like, oh, that's my house, my car. Because his face lit up when he saw me, and he was—he like pulled out his phone right away, like, "Oh, she actually will have a conversation on this translator app with me." And I'm, I'm sorry. Like, yeah. Did you already say what language does he speak? French. French. Yeah, and like the, I've, the I've French? never met someone that's like, you know, this French before. It's so <laughs> cool. <laughs> the French tow truck driver. He's such a nice guy too. But you don't know his uh, 
Nombre. No, see, how I have to, I'm going to have to do something to my car. So well, you that think that comes, would be the easiest thing? To me. <laughs> you would think it would be the easiest thing to find on that translator app as to how to ask someone their name. Yeah, I got, I got to get on that. <laughs> All right, so here's this guy again at the bank. Trying to rob the place through the translator app. He can't speak English. He's from Venezuela. He's, you know, putting his phone in their face with messages, get me the money, you know, put the money in the bag. The tellers did not give him any money. No dinero. So he upped and left. A cop said, I've been in law enforcement for over 20 years, 20 años. And this is the first time I encountered someone using a translator app to try and rob a bank. They found this guy, I mean, an hour later. An officer who spoke Spanish read him his rights and talked to the guy. The suspect told the cops he recently lost his trabajo, his job, and he needed money. That would really slow things down in a bank robbery, right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You want to make expediate your exit as you like much to be, as possible. Yeah, you like to be in and out. Vamanos. I'd find someone, uh, find a bank where you could tell somebody spoke Spanish. Yeah. Espanol. There usually is somebody that speaks Spanish at, at the bank. If you brought a translator to rob the bank with you, would he, would he be an accessory? He or she be an accessory at that point? Yeah, definitely. <laughs> Excessiente. <laughs> that didn't sound right to me. No. <laughs> this is my favorite part of the story. I mean, aside from the, the general gist of a guy trying to rob a bank with a translator app, the suspect denied trying to rob the bank. He told officers he simply went into the bank and asked them to put money inside a bag. <laughs> Wait, what? He wasn't trying to rob it. I wasn't he was trying, to trying to rob to them. I just cash. went in and asked them if they would put all the money in this bag. It's a little bit of a flimsy defense there. I really loved Spanish class. I really did. Back in 1986, I had a great time with it. It was maybe the first class in junior high that I enjoyed. I mean, aside from gym, of course, you know. I hated school, and I failed most of my classes. But the teacher was so much fun, and there was something fun about learning to speak Spanish where I was one of the best students in the class. Look at you. Yeah, a teacher can really make or break a class. Well, that's the way I looked at it back then. I shouldn't have looked at it that way, but I did. If the teacher I thought was cool and fun, I would at least put in a slight effort. If on day one, if they gave me a bad vibe, head down on the table and I'm asleep. I get that. <laughs> Senor Kivo. Uh, I should have took Spanish. I, I thought it was cool to take French. I took three years of French in high school. So, you know, 10 years ago, not that long. And uh, <laughs> I don't know a single thing. Like, you know, bonjour, je m'appelle Ashley, but that's about it. Well, yeah, I mean, you, you met up with a French, Was it, you, you, you've got a new French tow truck driving boyfriend, whatever you were telling us a few minutes ago. You, you could have used that knowledge on him and the two of you would be uh, in love. Run off, to the, in the, or run off to the sunset together. You, you Eat, must have recognized... together. Eating a baguette together? Yes. 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 Lady you must the trumpet. have recognized a few words, right? Hopefully. Yeah, I mean, that's how I could tell that he was French. Yeah. Not the accent? Because I think I could pick that out. <laughs> yeah. And I've never, no, I don't know one word in French. Because I, I feel with accents, especially the French one, I, I think it could be like, sound like so many other accents. I don't, I'm not really good at picking out accents, I guess. Masshole Jesus has texted in to ask me about my ninth grade. Uh, what, what, what was the topic again? Spanish. My ninth grade Spanish class. Uh, Masshole Jesus wants to know what was my Spanish name, right? Because everyone has to take a, a Spanish. My name was Raúl. Ooh, that's so weird. It was I, sweet. I was Alfonso. <laughs> <laughs> you strike me as an Alfonso. Yeah. <laughs> uh, it seems like you should be wearing one of those male blouses, just showing your chest <laughs> <laughs> with that name. <laughs> Alfonso. K O R S. That's beautiful. Call us to telefono. Give me a phone call on that, he says. He'll call me later. No, you know, what, when I'm what's watching what's one number. Huh? What's your phone number? Fair enough. When I'm watching one of those motion pictures, sometimes it bothers me. Tell me if anyone else goes along with this. Sometimes it bothers me when a high speed car chase happens 
and rarely does anybody get turned around or just straight up lost. In movies, everyone always seems to know exactly where they are and where they're going, no matter if they're familiar with the area or not, and no matter how pressure-packed the situation, being someone who has a terrible sense of direction, I find that to be unrealistic. They never get lost. They always seem to know where they're going. They always a- make the right turn, and I, I don't mean as right or left. I mean the correct turn. It's, it's stupid. And again, being someone with a terrible sense of direction, I just want to watch one chase where it ends with the driver going, okay, I have no idea where we are. You know what I mean? (laughs) In real life, it helps to know where the hell you're going. Especially if you're going to be driving around town in a stolen car. That way you don't call any attention upon yourself. In Boulder, Colorado, cops arrested a food delivery driver who was allegedly working that gig in a stolen car. And the driver busted himself when he stopped and asked the cops for directions on how to get to his next drop-off destination. This guy's real bright. He and his lady make a brilliant couple. So check this out right here. A couple of Boulder, Colorado cops in an unmarked vehicle spotted the stolen car a night or two ago. They went ahead and started following it around like they do. Eventually, the driver... Made the cops' jobs a lot easier. The driver eventually waved down the cops looking for directions on where he was at so he could deliver some food. I'm guessing that since the cops were in an unmarked car, the delivery dumbbell had no idea that they were, you know, John Law. Yeah, he would. He didn't know. It's the, like one of those, if there was no bad luck, they wouldn't have any luck type <laughs> yeah. of situations. Mm-hmm. Now... The driver man's female passenger. Oh, she had two prior motor vehicle theft convictions and an active drug trafficking warrant out of New Mexico. Oh, and as usual, there was some meth rocks in the car and some of that fentanyl. And on a creepy side note, the dude also had a fake BB gun in the car that had been altered to look like a real gun. And he also had a large knife Mm. in the car. To try and create some laughs on social media, the Boulder cops, they twittered out, your delivery driver is on the way. To jail! (laughs) Got him! (laughs) Cops sure seem to love doing that on social media these days. What, some of the funny stuff? Yeah. Yeah. Those lines that they throw out there. Oh, I'm sure we're going to get stuff for 420 soon. Uh, some cop jokes? Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. I love how they put, like, the Mountain Dew and then Cheetos or something, and then they have the box with the stick, and they're like, watch out, stoners, we're coming <laughs> yeah. for you. <laughs> Set up traps. Right. And they've, yeah. got, they've got a string attached yeah. to the stick so they yep. can trap you. <laughs> yep. <laughs> All right, architectural humor here. That's what I've got for you this time around. Finally, something that's more in my direct wheelhouse. Architectural humor. So here's the deal. Somebody with architectural skills put together a computer design of a new train station over there in China. They put together what it's going to look like once it's been built up. Are you following the words that are coming out of uh, my mouth? Yes. Social media dorks over there are just chuckling their asses off because they say the proposed train station building design looks like a sanitary pad. And boy, does it. <laughs> yeah, this is up on 93x.com. Oh, you, so it, see, I've never played around with a sanitary pad. So the, you're telling me... Well, I can't me- say I've never... I've ever played around with one, but <laughs> there were uh, four women in the house I grew up with, and uh, girlfriends and my wife now. I, I've definitely seen them. So you got a is... glimpse of one? Yeah, it looks exactly like one. Did you say girlfriend and wife? Girlfriends and wife. It's uh, oh. historically. Yeah, I thought you meant currently you had a girlfriend, which would have been awesome. <laughs> so uh, this is as funny as they're making it out to be over there in China, you're saying, Josh. Oh, yeah, it looks like one. It's pretty funny. I don't know that I would have immediately thought that but now that someone said it it's pretty obvious Sanitary. oh i would have definitely 100 yep. percent. oh you would have looked at that and thought it yeah yeah that wouldn't have come to mind for me i don't think <laughs> the designers of the station say the shape of the building is inspired by a common flower they have over that away called a plum blossom but i don't know what the hell 
Uh, but like I said, the social media dorks are teeing off. Uh, one of them said, this is a giant sanitary pad. It's embarrassing. It's not that um, serious. I'm not sure where to go with this. This next comment said, I think we should take this chance to call for society to pay attention to period shaming. This design is ahead of its time. <laughs> 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 All right, I do know where they're going with that. So anyway, despite what the eighth graders and the angry, attention-starved adults are saying, uh, whoever is in charge of building this new train station is going to go ahead anyway. Construction is due to begin soon. And they say this is a regular problem in China, apparently. Uh, the headquarters of a big old television station over there fields a lot of jokes from locals uh, who say the building looks like a, quote, big pair of boxer shorts. Josh will show you a big pair of boxer shorts. <laughs> I like sure will. He likes big ass, like 1951 big <laughs> boxer shorts. It's like I'm wearing basketball shorts under my basketball shorts. <laughs> your boxers hang out the bottom of your basketball shorts. Dude, he likes a big pair of boxers. I like to get them one or two sizes too big. I don't get that. I don't this know. isn't That's a penis-related thing. No, I mean, just no. for comfort. Comfort? To have that much material <laughs> swimming around in my pants it would just make me crazy. Well, I've got tree make... trunks for legs. Tree yeah. trunks? Otherwise, they're just uh, the, the legs get a little too tight on a guy, and then they ride up. Uh, I'd get wedgies for days. Oh, dude, I hated boxer shorts. You just choke your testicles to death after walking for five minutes. <laughs> All right. What else is going on around here in the stupid news? Speaking of you social media pukes, I'm going to help you out now. I'm going to pass on a message from a lady who says she got a disturbing message from a random person on social media. Which I'm sure happens a lot. Disturbing messages from randos. I'm yeah, so unfortunately, hear about that a lot. She's looking to warn folks to look out for sleazy some bitches. Here's the deal. Cheyenne is the name she's going with. Cheyenne. She said uh, she was uh, selling a pair of boots on something called Facebook Market By God Place. Oh, I love that. Everybody loves Facebook. When someone <laughs> sent her a message, someone sent her a message. Uh, one person sent her a message that said, Hey, this might sound a little strange, but if I paid you $50 on the spot, would you be down to meet up at like a park or something? Mm. And let me lick the soles of your boots? Oh. Word. They, no. I'm they, listening. No. They wrapped up their message by saying, totally weird as F, but I'll pay you for it. And it didn't take long for another boot licker to jump in. The next one said, it might be a little strange, but may I lick your boots when you are wearing them? I think that's also what the first person was saying, but, you know, whatever. Both of them ended up offering Cheyenne $100 each to lick her boots for her, and they didn't even want the boots afterwards. Mm. They just wanted to give them a little... Yeah, uh, I, I don't like the noise. Yeah, that noise. Hmm. <laughs> little licky lick. So, you know, if she went along with this... She'd be up 200 bucks without even getting rid of her boots. Would you go along with that, Ashley? Let's say, I mean, you're in a safe place. Uh, there's people you know around you to make sure nothing happens other than this boot licking. Yeah, you definitely. Would? 100 yeah. bucks? If there, was, if there was people around me <laughs> that could make sure that I'm safe, yeah. You'd be okay with a complete stranger seeing your face, seeing you, and licking your boots... For two hundred dollars, yeah, that's, definitely. That's frightening. Yeah, that you would agree to that. Well, I, I'm safe though. No, you're not. The Josh guy just now said that I'm safe. No, no, no. You see, in, we, in we, moment, we do this all are. the time, and 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 I, I I get afraid for you at times. You're safe for the moment, but now this guy knows what you look like. Well, he probably already would have known what I looked like because of Facebook Marketplace. Yeah, she her, her she's all over the internet, so he'd know that, but. I want to ask you, Ashley, what's the lowest amount of money you'd pay <laughs> to let somebody lick your boot? Probably two, probably 200. 200 is the lowest. Good, I think that's a good, 
Yeah, a good amount of money there. Please. I'm no. not trying to be a dick, but I'll undercut you by about $75. <laughs> Darn it, Josh. Get out of here. Oh, wait, wait. You said 200 Okay, so I'll do it for 10 bucks. Yeah. <laughs> just gas money getting to and from the park. <laughs> <laughs> you just want the experience. That's it. I love what you said when the hypothetical is thrown. If people you know are around you when it happens, please never call me and say, hey, Dana, will you go to the park with me to be a... <laughs> Just you know, my bodyguard while some man licks my boots. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna take part in that. Actually. I would jump all over that. <laughs> I gotta see this happen. I, see this guy. Yeah, I want to know what this guy looks yeah. like, so I don't accidentally bump into him somewhere. <laughs> I'm gonna avoid this dude. Ashley, please never play out these scenarios in real life. Okay. You wouldn't, right? This is hypothetical. Two hundred dollars is some psycho is licking your no don't please don't ever do that i would just send him the boots i'd be like just take them just he give doesn't me want the boots. the boots he doesn't want the boots in the comment section people said it was traumatic to receive such bizarre messages people urged the cheyenne to be safe someone else said please don't do it these are scammers who are targeting innocent people don't do this please please they said it's a little far to call it traumatic i think <laughs> Okay. It's a little scary. The last I heard, uh, Cheyenne said she's currently on her way to an isolated park all by herself to meet the two. <laughs> yeah. She says she'll get back to us when she gets home. <laughs> it's been four days. Yes, right. <laughs> Please don't ever do that. I know you think that, you know, once it's, you know, once I walk away, once he's done with the boot licking, it's over. Oh, I bet it's far from over at that point. <laughs> That's just the beginning. It's only just begun. Every time you go to the store, every time you look out your window, there's that dude and he's going, Stop well, it. Why? Why do you have to? Because that's do... what he's doing. No, you don't, we don't need the noise. I'm trying to emphasize uh, that right, I want, We can follow along. I want my friend to be safe I'll, at any cost, Josh. I'll even I'll even wag my tongue but into a mic. Why do we have to pay that cost? <laughs> you pay the cost. Everywhere you go, he's there. He's watching you. Hey, Ashley. <laughs> oh, gosh, no. I'm the bootlicker guy. Mem- do you uh, do you remember me? <laughs> I licked your boots. <laughs> All right. Oh God, we're out of time. Want me to roll through this one real quick, Josh? Yeah, I think you don't need a lot. A lot of time for this one. Total nightmare here. A family got their nine-year-old son a pet octopus, and then the stupid octopus gave birth to fifty babies. Oh boy! Oh. And there were no survivors. I didn't even know you could. Have a pet octopus, to be honest with you. I don't know. Yeah, I never looked into such yeah, a never, thing. I guess maybe I just never noticed at yeah. like the fish store if they had octopi. The dad, <laughs> you know. If it's the, alive and you buy it from a store, you can kind of do whatever you want afterwards. Just I don't know. In the tank. Wait a oh, minute. yeah, that's true. No, like, they sell live octopus that you can yeah. consume. I don't know the rules. Oh, they do? Mm-hmm. Yeah. I did not know that. Kind of yep. like when Homer Simpson had the pet lobster, Pinchy. Oh, boy, he was so sad when he ate delicious pinchy. (laughs) So the dad's a total sucker. His kid is bitching and whining up and down. I want an octopus. So he gets the kid an octopus, and then it just starts spitting out babies like it was Nick Cannon's side piece. Oh, I'd be livid. The family turned it into some kind of a TikTok gimmick. They spent thousands of dollars to feed these stupid things, and they had 50 separate tanks for the babies. Oh, oh my goodness. Wow. I just loved them since I was two, because they're the closest things to aliens. When the babies started hatching faster than I could kind of catch them, I had to move a lot of them into the bathroom in these small containers because they would eat each other if they were put in the same container. Dude. And then the octopus encountered a snake. And, you know, the octopus kind of just goes, whoa. Um, you know, like an, uh, and the snake went. <laughs> hello, 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 Mr. Octopus. Because I got a tongue that shoots out of their yap, Josh. Have you seen snakes before? I have, yeah. yeah. You're probably spot on there, yeah. Uh, but I guess the good news is now they're dying off. The good news. <laughs> <laughs> They're not, he's down to about half of them now. They're dying. But octopus experts are saying, well, you, 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 they lived a lot longer than they should have. You did a good job trying to, you know, you can't keep 50 separate octopuses alive. No, what? They just got like an octopus room? <laughs> Where are you putting all those tanks? Eh. I don't know. What would you guys do? You had 50 octopuses, octopi in the, 
Uh, There's got to be someone you can call for that kind of thing. Well, well, yeah, a rescue did come and take a, 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 the majority, if not all. Oh, good. Oh, okay, I yeah. mean, you got a toilet, don't you? <laughs> oh, no. I'd start, a Waffle great moon, I'd start a great moon buffet. Oh, <laughs> you cook them up. Octopuses. Yeah. You're cooking wow. them up. Yeah. I'd teach them how to play hockey and just start my oh. own league. <laughs> yeah, they'd be big fans of the Kraken. Wapples ordering up 55-gallon drums of butter. <laughs> <laughs> what are you doing? I got a lot of cooking to do. I'm going to be busy. <laughs> they named them. You know, like I, some of the uh, ones I remember were Seance. They named one of the octopus or octopi Seance. There's Bill Nye the Octopi. Swim, <laughs> Swim Shady was another one. Oh, that's fun. Man, you can spend all day naming all those. Yeah. Oh, uh, yeah, there's pusses. a lot of them. Brilliant. We got to take a break. We'll be right back. Do you ever finish playing a video game and think, wow, this game was so awesome and fun that I wish I could have paid more for it? Yeah, me neither. But the former president of the huge gaming company, Blizzard Entertainment, thinks you should be able to tip already well-paid game developers. Despite the fact that video games already cost a crap ton. I guess it's a sweet sentiment, but come on. We're already out here buying $70 games and buying DLC packs on top of that, so let's be real. No one is thinking, I wish I could give them more money. Unless, of course, it goes both ways. Then I'd be down. Say I finish a video game and I actually hate it. If I could get my money back after paying for a game that sucked, I'd have extra money to be able to tip the video game developers that helped create my favorite games. AKA the developing team for Skyrim would probably have all of my money by now. In other video game news, the TV series Fallout finally came out on Amazon and the reviews are phenomenal. Because of the incredible reviews, the Fallout video games have doubled in player count. I've never been a huge fan of video games being turned into TV shows, but the beaming reviews make me want to give it a try. If you've checked it out, I would love to hear what you think. You can text me your thoughts on the Fallout TV series by hitting me up on the Luther Kia of Bloomington text line. That is 651-989-9393 and start your message with Ashley. Well, that's all I have for you this week. Tune in around this time next Wednesday to hear a new video game update. Sports on the 93X Half-Assed Morning Show. Goodbye, Blake Griffin, you soft ginger hair colored Lindsay Lohan freckled face two headed bitch. Take your ass home, bitch. Does anyone know what Blake Griffin is? Did Morgan Freeman and Carrot Top impregnate an Amazon? I know we're all here making fun of Caitlin, but honestly, I want to take this moment to publicly thank you. On behalf of the entire NBA and half of the rappers on the Billboard charts, I want to thank you for giving your daughters their daddy issues. You know, old Blake Griffin's retiring from playing professional basketball. He had a nice run there for a while. 12, 13 years he was in the league. Um, You think he'll go into stand-up comedy now, Josh? Yeah, he's been doing it. Yeah, he's been doing it for a while now. Yeah, Yeah. that's that's why I asked the question. Yeah, I mean, uh, and I remember us watching a Blake Griffin stand-up video from a while back, and he was very funny. Yeah, he is. Surprisingly so. Mm -hmm. I remember seeing his name coming up on one of the roasts and thought, well, I bet this isn't going to be that good, but he he does a good job. He did a great cameo on, played himself on the show Broad City, which is absolutely fantastic if you've ever seen that show. Never saw it. I've never even heard of it. It's a Comedy Central show. Yeah, very funny. He played himself... uh, he got very naked throughout the entire episode. It was very funny. Oh, I don't need that. One thing, and I, I don't even know what this joke means, but the way he put it was perfect. When we were playing, years ago, we played Blake Griffin stand-up comedy on this program, and he did his imitation of everyone he meets in Hollywood. And this was simply the imitation. I basically am Larry David. <laughs> I don't even know what that means, but that's very funny to me. <laughs> All right, uh, real quick, we'll cover this and that. Oh, remember we were in the uh, in the Stupid News report. We were talking about some dude who bought an octopus, and then suddenly the octopus spit 50 babies uh, all over his house, and he had to try to keep them all alive at once, and a bunch of them died. And we talked about, well, you know, in the end, you might just have to flush some of them down. the. Uh, a listener says, don't flush octopus down the toilet. Because eventually, they, they, they said they'll survive that, and then they climb up the drain, and then they they throw one of those uh, suction cups up, and it hits you in the taint. Oh, oh no. no. That just gave oh. me the chills. Not the taint. Uh-huh. I wouldn't like that. When uh, Brad Ryder joins us in about a half hour, Randy Shaver's not available today. He's got a day off. 
Brad Ryder's going to join us, though. We'll talk about the results from last night's NBA play-in games. The Twins got pumped again. We'll have our final Minnesota Wild update for the season coming up when Brad joins us around 7.30. Uh, Till then, uh, we'll take a little break ski and come back with Josh's news report. Half-assed morning show. They're loud. They lose control. They do their little circus act. They're a nuisance. 93X. Our experienced and certified technicians at Standard Heating have been trusted to keep our fellow Minnesotans comfortable and confident for over 90 years. We're ready to do the same for you, providing comfort you deserve since 1930. It is the triple savings spring sale at Standard Heating and Air Conditioning. Install a new furnace and AC combo and save up to $3,000 with manufacturer and utility rebates along with Standard Heating's discount. That's a trifecta. Visit standardheating.com. Mike Carruthers shares little pieces of intel and interviews you can use to improve your life on the Something You Should Know podcast. The next time you're looking for a job and have to write a cover letter, here's some advice from Skip Freeman, author of a book called Headhunter's Hiring Secrets. Add a P.S. to the bottom of that cover letter. That can actually increase the chances of that letter being read by up to 75%. Some people actually glance down and read the P.S. first. Something You Should Know. Search on YouTube or wherever you listen. Half-assed morning show. 93X. We'd really like to avoid a tragedy from happening, and this is our attempt of trying to get ahead of that. I don't even want to think about it, because if there's real weapons involved and somebody is trying to protect the life and safety of others, we can only imagine how severe this could have gone quickly. A person dressed in camouflage and carrying a long gun in Brooklyn Park yesterday morning turned out to be a teenager playing a water gun game. Officers were called about 6.45 a.m. on reports of someone dressed in camouflage attire, carrying a long gun, and walking through yards. Police searched the area using a drone and located and detained a suspect, who officers learned was playing a game known as Senior Assassin. According to police, the game involves high school-age students uh, tagging each other while using squirt guns. The incident prompted police to issue a reminder of the dangers of carrying firearm lookalikes, which is a crime within Brooklyn Park and other parts of the state. The viral challenge has sparked similar warnings in other communities across the country in recent days. Departments nationwide, in fact, are getting the word out to the public. It wastes police resources responding to calls without knowing whether each case is an actual crime or students just having fun. Luckily, no one got hurt. Our officers take it very seriously. We have to. Every call like that is handled as if it's the real thing. Authorities also warned that the depiction of firearms, whether real or fake, may have legal or even deadly consequences. We did that in high school. Senior assassin? Was yeah, it the Nerf yeah. gun one? Yeah, we used Nerf guns. And then, uh, actually, my boyfriend went to Osseo High School, so close to Brooklyn Park, and oh, they, they did God. the same thing. I know. That's why he's a little weird. Yeah, that explains. <laughs> we assumed it was his taste in women that was the key indicator <laughs> as to him being a little off. But no, you're saying it's where he went to high school. Yep, yep. Yeah, I'll say it again, Cubby. It sounds like a uh, easy way to die young. Yeah, you know, and this really is something that a lot of departments across the country are talking about. Last week, I was watching a story, I think out of Orlando, where somebody tagged a buddy at a restaurant and someone was carrying, thinking it was, you know, a, a possibly deadly situation and pulled a gun on the kid. Oh, jeez. Oh, my gosh. So cops are saying, hey, you know, if this person didn't show some restraint, this could have been a terrible ending here. What are you doing? A former South Carolina math teacher is accused of passing out drugs and booze to one of her teen students. What? Mm, Can't do that. Certainly ill-advised. But she doubled the dumbassery by choosing to do it in front of her own kids who narked on her. (laughs) Ah, that's that's cool. Najla Clayton was arrested earlier this month after she gave a 16-year-old boy marijuana and tobacco at Clear Dot Charter School, where she was working at the time. The 36-year-old educator also offered her 11-year-old daughter weed while allowing her to smoke a tobacco product. Where the hell was this gal in the 80s? (laughs) Her daughter, as well as her younger child, who's six, told another family member about the incidents leading to the older relative contacting police. The disgraced educator could reportedly face more than 20 years in prison if convicted on all charges. Maybe she thought it's still the 80s, you know what I mean? And you could get away with that. You know, I'm the cool mom and cool teacher. Even in the wholesome state of Nebraska, educators can do some not-so-wholesome things. 
A substitute teacher was caught naked in a car with a teenage student. What? And it was revealed she's also a mom and married to a Harvard-educated, high-ranking federal <laughs> government employee. Oh. 45-year-old Aaron Ward confessed to having sex with the 17-year-old, a student of Burke High School where she worked, and she did this in the back of the family car. <laughs> The now-retired teacher was arrested early Saturday when deputies found her fooling around with a teenage boy in a car she shared with her husband, Doug Ward, a director at the U.S. Department of Defense with whom she shares three kids. How do you think Doug's handling this, Cubby? Oh, man. Not great. How do you think his kids are handling uh, it? Have any of you talked to Doug? <laughs> yeah, he's having a bad week. He is. Officers responded to a call for a suspicious car parked on a dead-end street around 3 a.m. that morning. When they peeked into the vehicle, they saw the naked substitute teacher with a partially clothed teen in the back seat. The panicked teen hurried into the driver's seat and sped off in the vehicle, but crashed two blocks later. Oh, no. <laughs> then he fled on foot, and the high schooler was found hiding in a yard in only his T-shirt and underwear. Probably got his boner <laughs> caught in the steering wheel. Oh, no. <laughs> That's how it caused him to crash. The teacher remained in the car where she got dressed and confessed to the tawdry transgression. The man she cheated on has spent nearly two decades with U.S. Strategic Command within the Defense Department. Her husband is part of a group that detects and deters attacks against the U.S. and its allies. But he couldn't defend his own home. <laughs> well, put that on him. Uh, yeah, I guess he didn't see that one coming. Yeah, he feels like a jackass, yeah, I'll tell I you that. I can't imagine. Yep. He's busy trying to save the world, and then that happens. Yeah. An elected prosecutor in eastern Kentucky accused of doing favors for criminal defendants in return for meth and sex has resigned from office. Probably for the best. 51-year-old Scott Blair submitted his resignation Monday following his Friday arrest on federal charges. Beginning in 2020, he's accused of soliciting sexual favors and buttloads of meth from people facing criminal charges and then taking actions to help them out. A conviction is possible by up to 20 years in prison. How much time am I looking at? Well, it depends how much meth you got on you. That's exactly what happened. Mm -hmm. yeah. How good are you on your knees? What oh. can you do for daddy? <laughs> daddy. A Dunkin' Donuts employee in Florida shot a man in the drive through Monday morning. The guy said that one guy shot another guy three times. He heard three gunshots. Police said a Dunkin' Donuts employee shot the man at the establishment's drive through the shooter is an employee of Dunkin' Donuts. Luckily, during all of this, no one else was injured. This happened around 8.30 this morning when people are getting their coffee, getting their breakfast, and heading to work, and sure. could have been much worse. According to local media, detectives are trying to determine what led to that shooting. Then at a Dunkin' Donuts location in New York, a convicted felon's boozy rage over not being able to buy pumpkin donuts at a Brooklyn Dunkin' could land him in a federal slammer for seven years. 35-year-old Antonio Rosario, who once served time for attempted murder, went out of his gourd in a Dunkin' Donuts because employees <laughs> couldn't fill his pumpkin donut order. One of the workers described the doughy dispute to a 911 dispatcher. He wants six pumpkin donuts. It's the stupidest thing. He wants six pumpkin donuts, but we only have five at the moment, so now he's screaming all in our face, telling us, you're going to effing make it. Oh, man. And in more pumpkin-related news, an Australian man took the largest pumpkin grown in the country and turned it into a canoe, which he paddled down a river. That's pretty cool. That's fun, yeah. Did I send you this picture? Ashley? No, I didn't know. Uh -uh. Okay, my bad. I'll, uh, I'll do that after uh, the news here. The nearly 900-pound pumpkin named Tormund, in honor of the Game of Thrones character Tormund Giantsbane, was grown by Mark Peacock and scored a blue ribbon. The pumpkin, the largest to win an award at any Australian show this year, captured the imagination of his friend Adam. Adam, who earned the nickname Popeye the Pumpkin Man from locals, hollowed it out into a boat and paddled it for a mile as about 1,000 spectators followed along from shore. And then he died? No, he he's alive. Did he drown? No, he did not. Oh. He's doing just fine. <laughs> just fine. Just fine. A long-haul truck driver is on the mend after a turkey went through his windshield, causing the truck to crash earlier this month. That'll wake you up. 
Eat. Josh, you're a turkey. Stop that. You are. Yeah, thank you. It's <laughs> awesome. You're my little cupcake. Mm. The bird <laughs> struck through the wind, truck's windshield, shattering it and hitting the driver on the left side of his face, knocking him unconscious, unfortunately. They were cleaning his wounds and pulled out some turkey feathers. Oh. They called it an orbital blowout, so the entire bone structure behind his left eye is shattered. Ah! That's his daughter. She uh, couldn't help but laugh. <laughs> Uh, she said when she visited her father in the hospital, they both used humor as a coping mechanism. Lots of laughing. I had actually shown him, the second I got it, the picture of the dash cam that we got of the turkey looking down the barrel of the dash cam coming at his windshield. <laughs> and even with the rib, he was laughing about it. He thought it was hilarious. As you heard in the first clip, she kept talking about how funny it was that they're pulling feathers out of his face. That's crazy. Is the turkey okay? I don't think the turkey made Well, the question is, is the hooker okay? <laughs> the hooker's fine. Okay. Uh, she said her dad has no memory of the incident, and thankfully, he's now on the mend. More foul play on North American road raids as a forthcoming Canadian man admitted exactly how he crashed his vehicle just before 3 p.m. Sunday, April 7th. He told police he lost control after reaching for a piece of fried chicken. Mm. <laughs> A police spokesperson said this bite of chicken could have been deadly. Can any of you think of the funniest car accident you've ever heard of? Ever heard of? Oh, boy. Or been involved in, sure, if, if you were involved in one. Uh, I had a friend point out that there were two people kissing on the side of the road, and I rear-ended somebody right in front of me when I took a look. Wait a minute, that, that story got confusing. You had a friend, and then it turned into a... You were speaking in the first person. What happened there? I said I had a friend yeah. tell me that two people were kissing on the side of the road, and I rear-ended oh, the person in I front see. of me. I thought you were trying to play a, I you were trying to dump a mind f on us. No, okay. no, no, no. Uh, well, my buddy ran off the road because he threw an apple out the window, and it hit a railing, and a part of the apple came back and hit him in the eye, and he was blinded. Oh no! <laughs> and then he drove his brand new Cutlass off the road. We worked with a guy who sneezed and crashed into a center median oh now that i think about it uh my friends they were driving a car they were shooting fireworks out the window and they crashed into a tree yeah that's deserved i was in a vehicle as a passenger that was street racing and uh the driver Sweet. went around a corner super fast and crashed into the person that he was racing oh, oh. i was in a, we almost got in an accident we were driving home from some cabin weekend and the driver of the car was very hungover, violently hungover, and he tried to throw up into a 20-ounce pop bottle, you know, like the small little lid there. He was mm -hmm. trying to get his puke to go into that little of the hole of sure. the 20-ounce pop bottle dude. and almost crashed. Yeah, that's not going to work. No, no. It's like, dude, just pull over and throw up on the side of the road like a man. <laughs> that's what most people do. Uh -huh. Yeah. Two people were hospitalized when a passenger accidentally caused a vehicle to stall in the middle of a Long Island road by not knowing how to use the climate control in a modern vehicle. An SUV driven by 35-year-old Jacob Rottenberg was traveling northbound in the center lane when a passenger in the vehicle, 76-year-old Aaron Malik, accidentally pressed the start off button while attempting to adjust the temperature. The vehicle stalled and came to a complete stop in the center lane. Oh, Christ. Meanwhile, a 27-year-old Brooklyn man was unable to avoid colliding with the SUV. Luckily, none of the injuries were considered life-threatening, and no tickets were issued in connection to the accident. So the vehicle will just kill itself like that, huh? I guess it just uh, slowed to a stop. Huh. You'd think there'd be some kind of protection against that snafu, because I don't know how to run the, uh, the air conditioning and heat in my vehicle. You probably never turned the vehicle off, though, I'd imagine. Or turn, have you? Turn the vehicle off? Which is what happened in this case. I don't know. I just, uh, I, I, I'm better with the big fat knobs. You know what I mean? I, as, I as, agree. as opposed to punching up the screen, I always uh, make someone do it for me. As water supplies are rationed in the Colombian capital, couples in Bogota are being asked to shower together. Well, well, well. Oh. If you insist. You know, can you imagine telling that to uh, your significant other who may, might not be interested in something like that and just saying, no, 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 the mayor said we have to do this? Mm -hmm. Major neighborhoods were cut off from the water grid last week to preserve dangerously low water levels at reservoirs, leading to the mayor to announce, shower as a couple, he said, and also asked residents to consider abandoning their daily hygiene practices entirely daily, given that the reservoirs are at historic lows. 
Bogota isn't the only major Latin American city forced to take action to combat drought. Mexico City has also been rationing water supplies this past month. Guatemala has declared an emergency as of last Wednesday as it struggles to tame wildfires. I know showering together sounds like fun, but now picture you're living with your ex. No, that would be that would be awful. I would hate every part of that. <laughs> I mean, the obvious answer would be living with your, you know, mother, sister, brother kind of a thing. But ima- oh. ima- imagine you're in one of those situations where you're still living with your ex. Mm. <laughs> well, some well, people like we to tap it. that well every once in a while. <laughs> sure. Women in Minnesota may soon be legally permitted to go topless in public spaces if a new bill becomes law. Mm. The bill proposed Monday in the Minnesota Senate would exclude solely exposing your breasts from criminal penalties. The proposed legislation aims to clearly define indecent exposure to clarify the mere exposure of a human breast does not constitute lewd exposure, an initiative that follows a similar change made by Minneapolis for their parks in 2020. In recent years, the Free the Nipple campaign has pushed for women to be treated the same as men when it comes to being topless in public. Uh, This particular woman had an interesting take on it. Half of them are going to have them when they grow up, and all of them probably at least at one point sucked on them, so I don't know why they should be such a big deal. That's what she said. Did she say something about sucking on them? She did. Yeah, she did. Yeah, she mentioned that. What the hell? Yeah. Uh, If this goes statewide, we could all visit the Areola Lift Bridge in Duluth. (laughs) <laughs> split rack lighthouse oh, i can't wait to get back to flashing strangers on the side of the road <laughs> <laughs> well you can do it le- well i don't know i wonder in that particular ca- case if they'd say that was too uh pardon the pun but titillating yeah. where you're trying to distract somebody thoughts. yeah yeah Wapple's uh, developing a website called Nip Advisor, if you want some more press <laughs> donations. So far, it's a hit. <laughs> <laughs> what was that word you just used? Mm-hmm. Tonight on Fox, the 22nd season finale of Family Guy. Jennifer Garner, 52 today. Writer-director Adam McKay turns 56. Norman Boomer Esiason, uh, Esiason, wait, wait, Esiason, Esiason, there you go. Esiason, 63. And Sean Bean, great actor who gets killed on screen quite often, 65. (laughs) We wanted to recognize baking-loving craft beer snob Jesus, headed to New York today for an unfortunate reason. He's going to lay his best friend to rest. His friend, a retired Special Forces Army veteran, passed away unexpectedly last week and will be sorely missed. So our condolences to you as well as the family and loved ones of your friend who passed. CFH bass player Jesus text in a happy birthday shout out to his honey Christina aka Farty Britches Jesus and happy birthday to our bro and co-worker our bro worker Pablo today and that's 93X News Sports on the 93X Half-Assed Morning Show Here is Cardinal Manager Whitey Herzog Here's the White Rat from New Athens, Illinois. Whitey Herzog, one of the fine managers in Major League Baseball, the White Rat. The job I loved the most was coaching third base. I, I really do say. think I was the best third base coach ever. Here's the Royals manager, Whitey Herzog. I had a good job until my players messed it up. <laughs> Whitey, let me ask you about your team and give me a one-word answer. Team speed. Best in league. Team defense. Best in baseball. That's the winner! A World Series winner for the Cardinals! We're very happy about it, and just so we could bring a World Championship to St. Louis. Amidst it all, the man who got his Cardinals here, Whitey Herzog. All right, nobody panic, but Randy Shaver is unavailable to join us today. Luckily, the well-traveled and experienced Brad Ryder is... (laughs) is right here to chat with us. Hello, Brad. I am. Good morning. Morning. You know what I don't understand or appreciate, though, Brad, is you knew yesterday, you knew yesterday that Randy wouldn't be available today. You knew we'd be relying on you and you alone to help us with this segment uh, of our program, yet you still got drunk before you came on the air with us. (laughs) Before? What do you mean? I I don't I don't appreciate that. Yeah. It's the only way to get through things, you know. You see what I mean? Yeah, you reach yeah. a certain age, you're right. <laughs> listen, to, listen to the guy. Yeah. Hammered. Yeah. <sighs> the thing is, I'm not going to sound any different than when I'm sober. So. <laughs> you sound affected. Whitey Herzog has upped and died on us, Brad Ryder. Yeah, can we just listen to Vince Scully for the next half hour? Uh, I know. That's fun to listen to. Oh, my God. Did you recognize voice. the other voice that was interviewing Whitey Herzog there in the audio? Uh, no, I recognize it. 
Jack Buck a couple of times, but I didn't recognize who was interviewing him. Because back in those days, Jack Buck was strictly the Cardinals announcer, right? Yep. And then you had Vin Scully would get involved in the World Series, and it sounded like uh, in the audio there, it was maybe a, a post-game interview during the World Series there featuring the St. Louis Cardinals, and I recognized the voice of Joe Garagiola. Oh, sir. Mm-hmm. Yep. Whitey Herzog died, and, uh, you know, we here in uh, in Minnesota, if you're old enough, of course you remember he was the guy who was managing the St. Louis Cardinals up against Tom Kelly's Minnesota Twins in the 1987 World Series. There was nothing better than that Saturday game of the week when you were a kid and Joe Garagiola and Tony Kubek were the broadcasters. Remember that, or am I older than no, you? No, of course, and okay. there was something so special about... Because that was the only game that was on TV, that and on Monday night. Right, and yeah. if you would get some National League teams, my God, I get to watch a National League team on television. Yep. You know, that's what that's part of what made baseball so special back in those days. That's what made the All-Star game so special, was you got a chance to see guys that you never saw play. I mean, you could watch This Week in Baseball and keep up on the National mm-hmm. League teams, and, and I loved that program. That was a must-watch, too. Absolutely. Uh, in 1985, when the All-Star Game came here to the old Metrodome, I did not get to go to the actual All-Star Game, but I went to the Home Run Derby, which oh, was the first nice. ever first ever Home Run Derby. It was absolutely nothing like the gong show that it is today, <laughs> where it goes on for four and a half hours. It's and a whole process clocks now. Clocks yeah. and time limits and this and that. It was, uh, I don't know, I think guys got one or two swings. But anyway, it was so cool for me to see... Tony Gwynn and Andre Dawson and Tim Raines and Steve Garvey and who were the other? Fernando Valenzuela, Mm -hmm. Ozzie Smith, all the great players from the National League. That was Whitey Herzog's time when he was managing the Cardinals. Uh, He very successful. Um, back when the what, what year was the All Star Game at Target Field? Was it 2015? You're I want to say yeah, you're in the ballpark. You're there. in the right Some, neighborhood. Somewhere yeah. in there. Okay, yeah. so my my son and I went to the home run derby that year too, and we had seats out in the second deck in left field. Okay, one of those little tiny sections out there. Mm-hmm. And to your point that how many swings they take on, and how many chances they get. I mean, I think everybody and I'm not kidding. Almost everybody in our little section walked away with at least one ball. <laughs> <laughs> my my son caught one from you. Yasiel Puig, he caught. He actually caught one on the fly when he was like 10, 11 years old. And with or without a glove? With a glove. Okay. But I think everybody walked out of there with a ball. There were so many balls. Awesome. Right up there. I mean, that, that I guess, uh, that's a, it's a much more entertaining show now, the sure. Home Run Derby, but it didn't used to be so structured and my God, yeah, yeah. You, I, does anyone have any idea how many baseballs get launched into the stands oh, yeah. in a typical home run yeah, derby these a lot. days? It's Hundreds. O- over 100 for sure. Yeah. The most exciting thing for me, the home run derby these days, is hoping that two kids are just going to collide in center field trying to <laughs> well, shake. Well, that happened last year, no, didn't it's the it? Best. <laughs> yeah. I love it when the kids hurt themselves yeah. out on the well, ball field. I think some kid got clocked by a ball last year, didn't he? Oh, really? Yeah. Yeah. yeah what was the. Uh, I, I want to say it was a line drive, and he was kind of looking the he other had, way. Yeah, he had his back turned. Oh. Yeah. Oh. And it's just mass chaos out there. There's like 200 kids all running around trying to shake Well, these hell balls. yeah, because Fun. when I was 11 years old, I would certainly want to make some highlight reels, you know what I'm Absolutely. saying? Absolutely. I don't want anyone getting in the way. Uh, here's an old school Twins fan, UPS Golden Valley Delivery ju- Jesus, while talking about the passing of Whitey Herzog. Uh, he says, I'm still pissed about that Tommy Her for Tom Bernanski trade. Yep. He says, Oh, Whitey got that one over on us. Yes, he did. Mm-hmm. Twins made a bizarre trade in 1988 for second baseman Tommy Her, and we got. We had to give them right fielder Tom Bernanski in, in trade, and it was just silly, and Tommy Herr was just an odd guy. Anyway, 1982, Whitey Herzog and the uh, Cardinals won the World Series over the Milwaukee Brewers. Mm-hmm. That was the last time the Brewers got a whiff of that kind of a thing, and yeah. I remember one of the uh, – me and a couple buddies used to go to Milwaukee every couple of years to see a concert. Uh, boy, we saw Megadeth out there, Ronnie James Dio, Motorhead. We used to like to go to Milwaukee because it was a quick trip and they sold cold beer. Um, we sat down at an old beer hall, kind of a supper club in Milwaukee. Yeah, this is 10 years ago, maybe. And the guy behind the bar was a thousand friggin' years old. And we couldn't help it. We asked the guy, were you uh, tending bar at this joint? 
uh, back in 82 when the Brewers went to the World Series? And he said, yeah, I was here for that. And we said, what was that like? And he said, it was lawless. <laughs> <laughs> it was the craziest, you know, whatever, six days I've ever seen. And the, the, there was no, the cops couldn't do a damn thing. It was lawless, he said. Nobody ever sobered up. It was just one long six-day drunken spell. Mm. But I'm the a- difference between being lawless back then and lawless now is way different. I mean, oh, it was, you know, course. it was clean fun. He meant, that's exactly yeah. what he meant by that. He meant drinking and bar fights and good yeah. times, you know. Oh, man. I remember that series. Yeah, sure. I remember um, the uh, Brewers beating the California Angels in the American League Championship Series. Yep. I remember a very dejected look on the face of Reggie Jackson who was playing for the Angels at the time when the Brewers won the series. I love the Brewers. I, I could probably tell you their, their starting lineup. Go ahead. Uh, behind the plate was... Ted Simmons. <clears throat> I'm sorry, <laughs> Ted Simmons. Yeah, first yeah. base was Cecil Cooper. Yeah. Second base was, uh, wasn't it Foley, Tim Foley? Tim Foley. Uh, shortstop Robin Yount. Uh, third base, Sal Bando. <laughs> uh, left field, Ben Ogilvie. Uh-huh. Um, Hmm. Where was Gorm, Paul Gorm, Molitor? Gorman Thomas. Gorman I think, Thomas. I think Paul was wasn't he the DH? I'll go with I'll go along with it. Or he played a little second base, but was DH too. Sure. Um, and I'm spacing on the center fielder. Mm. I got eight out of nine. I yeah, think. you did good. You did good. Proud of you, Brad. Yeah. Well, Pete that's... Vukovic was a starting pitcher that year. Pete Vukovic. Raleigh Fingers was a closer. Pete Vuk- Vukovic. Uh, what an athlete. That's sarcastic. Where's my sarcasm? <laughs> the dude was built like a professional wrestler. Yep. Pete Vukovic. If you're younger, look him up. Christ almighty, I, I bet he couldn't do 10 sit-ups. Well, last night the twins were just straight up force-fed a piping Ooh. hot bucket of dog feces. Oh, by the oh my gosh. Just Again. Bad. It was a hot bucket of dog feces fed to the twins by the Baltimore Orioles. Uh, the oh. Orioles got, got three dongs out on us. They, uh... And they cracked the twins upside the head with that bucket just for good measure. Your final was 11-3 to three in f- uh, favor of, uh, how do you call that city again, Baltimore. Yeah. At least yeah. today's a noon game, so we can just get it over with. Right. I mean, Well, but Pablo <laughs> Lopez is on the bump. Yeah. Maybe yeah. he can get us out of town with a win and a little bit of pride. That'd be nice. Yeah, I know it's early in the season, but there are some disturbing trends going on. I mean, you know, again, the strikeouts and the starting pitching other than Pablo Lopez, and you got teams ahead of him in the division. And again, I know it's early. It is. But there are some teams with some young talent in the division that are playing pretty good mm-hmm. baseball right now. The Royals and Detroit's not bad, and Cleveland, and, you know, if it weren't for the White Sox, the Twins would probably be in last place right now. And Something. it is early, but we are five and a half games back already. Yeah, I know. That's what I'm saying. You it's can't win. win. <laughs> I mean, there's an old saying, you can't win the division in April, but you can surely lose it. I mean, and if you you fall 8, 9, 10 back already this early in the season, that's going to be tough to crawl out of. Something gave me hope, though. Um, I read that we have the same record as we did in 1991. Yeah, they started so. six and ten in nineteen ninety one. Aaron Gleeman tweeted that out. <laughs> we Listen need to something, Brad. Brad. We need something. Listen to Brad. We do this all the <laughs> we time. Do. Uh, the Orioles uh, fifteen hits were put up on the board. Twins struck out ten more times. Their starting pitcher, Chris Paddock, was beaten unmerciful. Nine runs, twelve hits. He did make it through five innings for the first time this season. <laughs> but they just need to get the hell out of Baltimore before someone gets killed. And, and maybe Pablo Lopez can do some wonderful things. Leo, I mean, what Baltimore did, you know, five six years ago, they completely bottomed out for a couple of years, and they just completely, you know, t- I mean, tanked and got some really good draft picks and built their minor league system up. And now you're seeing what happened, and you hate to think that maybe we have to do the same thing, and I'm not saying we do yet at this point, but, you know, we've been trying to compete the last few years, and we just don't have any really good starting young pitching coming up through the minors, and at some point you've got to figure out how to do that. we got a lot of talent in the outfield and the infield, Yeah, but, but need, not at the pitching. Yeah, right. uh, you've, been starting to, pitch. yep, you've been trying to patch that together. Made a really nice trade. I'm still in favor, in favor of that Arise trade, obviously, because yeah. Lopez, that was a great trade, but you cannot continue to fill your starting rotation with second-level free agents and trades. you got to develop some pitching at some point. A couple of side notes here. Brad Ryder, 
on the line with us here. Randy Shaver's unavailable, short but fat cheeses has sent us a text message and she says now that she's hearing you all by yourself without Randy she's realizing how much sexier you sound on the radio than Randy (laughs) Shaver there's no competition right now Uh, Brad well thank you no see yeah See, that ruined it that was a little embellished you're, fake, you're faking it yeah. uh here we go what what else was there in front of me here i got a couple more messages for brad Ryder. jim gantner played second base oh yes you're okay right. it was yeah. gantner and yount in the middle of the yep. infield absolutely i don't know how i didn't come up with that uh, yeah and you were talking about how raleigh fingers was the closer for Wasn't the brewer he? yeah no no raleigh okay. fingers was the closer for the brewer uh text came in josh that says your mother is a closer don't do that <laughs> oh. Josh was having such a good day, too. But did she have a mustache like Raleigh? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he had a stash That was a heck of a mustache. He sure did. Was. Didn't he have a good one coming? Yeah. You could do that. Oh, I don't know. I wonder. I think you should could. Should I give it a try, or would that just be ridiculous? I I would love to think that you could go through with that, but I know after a while you get a little crazy when you grow the facial hair. Yeah, I, I get my wife yells at me if I shave. I, I recently did, and she's not happy. She needs. <laughs> she to, hates my face. Well, she needs to save it because you're the best thing that's ever happened to her. Um, but you're like any any guy. We all have that problem. When we grow some facial hair, we dig it for a while, and after a while, most of us it drives us crazy. But you are you are very skilled when it comes to facial hair. You can grow a really solid. I think you could do the Raleigh fingers bit. Well, I don't know. I mean, the, the, Everyone's the, twir- gonna th- the twirl, though? I mean, maybe, I guess. I mean, you can, that, that takes practice. Here's a problem. Other than the fact that it'll drive you nuts, it gets scratchy and all that typical stuff, people are going to think that you work at a brewery. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, people are going to think you, you... Or I make my own clothes. Yeah. Yep. Something like that. People are going to think that you ride a unicycle to work. But I've got too much of a baby of face. I can't. I can't do that. You're way too good looking for that. Brad well, Ryder says, uh, "Short but fat cheeses." You know, I wonder when Randy retires if he's going to grow a beard. I could see him do it because boy, did his oldest grow one heck of a beard. Oh, yeah. oh boy, yeah. yeah when he, he did. left TV, he grew a huge beard. I, I, I could see Randy doing that. Yeah, but here's the problem with Randy Shaver growing a beard. He's already spending enough money on shoe polish for his hair. <laughs> <laughs> but maybe he have... won't have to though after he retires. Maybe he'll just let his hair go too. Oh, I don't think so. He's no. too he's too vain. I can't Do you think he dyes his, his hair? What? Do you really I, I I can't tell that kind of thing. I mean if it's really a bad dye job I can tell, but you really do. Well yeah. Oh. Yeah. I didn't notice that. If, if, is, am I the only one that didn't realize it's that? Not I, did, never I really didn't considered. think that he did. Yeah, I never really looked at look too long at his hair oh i look at it all the time and let me tell you brad Ryder, a college mm-hmm. baseball player hit a 516 foot home run <laughs> a couple days ago playing college baseball for the florida gators another fastball and look out face on the scoreboard that actually might hit it that went over the scoreboard ladies and gentlemen another jack for jack 21st of the year and that's seven straight games that he has left the yard. No wonder those aluminum bats mangle a few kids every baseball season. <laughs> well, it's a good thing they went away from the aluminum bats a few years ago. They're uh, composite now, which is supposed to be a little bit safer. A little bit? Yeah, than the aluminum. The kids are but, soft. I yeah. mean, this guy's a big-time prospect. This, his name is Jack Coglinione. <laughs> <laughs> Do you spell that? <laughs> He's a big-time prospect. Potentially a number one pick type of a guy. Um, so I'm not to try to take too much away from the kid, but come on. Those bats are freaking crazy. Hitting a 516-foot home run. That's frightening. Yeah. His legs looked massive for some reason to me. He it's doesn't huge. He doesn't skip squat there. No, no, he doesn't. You ever, I do. Pardon me? You do what? <laughs> I skip leg day. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, there's been a sentiment, and especially in Division One baseball, for a while now to go to wood, but it's it's a cost thing. It, it's too much. It's too much money. They can't do it. Oh, I hear you. I hear you. I mean, but have, have, you, you spend a lot of time. You you raised a couple of kids playing yeah. baseball and softball. Have you have you been at one of those games where a line drive about kills a kid? Well, yeah, it's almost happened to me before pitching BP to some of these kids. Yeah. God dang! It's just it's. That just it shouldn't be happening. I remember I used to make fun of the girls on the other softball teams when they had like when they played third or shortstop and they'd have masks. At the cage. On. Yeah. That wasn't required. 
No, no, it was not required. Uh, oh, okay. And so um, you would call them soft, and yeah, they would- like Haha, look at them, they look so funny. Until I watched my uh, the, a girl on my team that played third take a ball to the face, a ah! line drive, and I was like, all right, you wear as many masks as you want, dude. <laughs> Oof, duh. Yeah, my girlfriend's a pitcher, and she took a... More like a belly itcher. <laughs> <laughs> she, she took one right back to her, and it hit her above the eyebrow, and she still has a scar. It happened like four years ago. Ouch. Doesn't surprise me you're the catcher in that relationship. I, know. <laughs> just, I mean, just yesterday, I was throwing front toss to my gals on my, on my team, and I had a screen, but I'm literally only three feet away from them when I'm throwing front toss because we're trying to increase their you know, flexibility and things like that. So I'm doing it really close to him. And I, a couple of times I was thinking, man, there, there's just a thin layer of screen between me and death right now. <laughs> Social anxiety, yeah, it's, it's scary stuff. Social anxiety, uh, Jesus, has a question for you, Brad Ryder. Yeah. And uh, he, he, how are wood bats more expensive than aluminum or composite bats? This guy, Social Anxiety Jesus, says those things are over $1,000. Are well, but expensive? you can get through you can get yeah. through an entire season with one of them. Right. Whereas if you know if you're using wood bats, you might break one or two a game. Okay, and, but, but what's the yeah. cost of a of a, a high test uh, big time wood bat for baseball? Wood Not as bat. much. They're 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 cheap. Yeah, a hundred. Yes, that's it. Cheaper. Yeah, it's about a hundred bucks at Dick's. I saw. Okay, them. but you'd go through you know hell. Yeah. How many, okay, sure. I see where you're going. And the manufacturing of them. I mean, how many more trees are we going to kill? You know, I mean, Major League Baseball is already using them. a bunch of them, and so yeah, there's that. <laughs> And then here's a smart mouth comment from Ask Me About CrossFit Jesus. He says, oh, where, oh, where would the NCAA ever get a little extra money for wooden well, bats? I, I know. Yeah. I get it. But they're not going to spend it on a non-revenue sport. Yeah, that's a good point. There you go. Non-revenue, he says. Brad's anti-baseball. No. <laughs> yeah. Brad. I'm still trying to find a situation where I can use that word in a sentence. Non-revenue? Non-re- yeah, Describe I, the current state of radio. Go. Non-revenue-based <laughs> entertainment. Oh, Jesus, that was a lot easier than I thought it was going to be. <laughs> now, I don't have any idea who these two guys are, but this does sound like fun. This week, a couple of boxers, one by the name of Ryan Garcia and another who goes around town being called Devin Haney. Ryan Garcia and Devin Haney, they're promoting... A boxing match they got coming up in Brooklyn here on what day is it today? This will be Saturday night. Never heard of either one of these guys. Uh, things got heated at their first little uh, media showdown, right? Uh, they they hosted this event on the top of the Empire State Building. Weird. Okay. <laughs> um, and, you know, and they, they shoved and cussed at each other. Your typical pre-fight antics for boxing and MMA these days. Mm-hmm. Now, hours later, they were supposed to throw out the first pitch ahead of the Mets-Pirates game there in New York. They showed up. Now, I don't know if this is all a work. It very easily could be. But the story says the Mets changed their mind at the last minute and wouldn't allow these guys to go out onto the bump to throw out the first pitch because they were worried that the two of them would fight and cuss in front of fans. Sure. I could get, I, I could understand that 100%. Did you almost fight someone when you threw the first pitch? Yeah, I almost took on TC Bear actually. He would kill you. <laughs> he talks a lot of smack. So. He talks? <laughs> actually, he did talk to me that day so and it was the worst. I was like, why would you have to do that? You just broke my heart. <laughs> kind of ruins the illusion, doesn't it? <laughs> yep. Do we have this video up on 93x how do you call it, dot com? Yes, we do. All right, if you want to see it, it's nothing out of the ordinary than what you normally see from these boxers and MMA guys. And again, I don't know, Josh, you tell me it looked legitimate when they were... Oh, yeah, they, they, when they were, looked uh, like they hate each other. When they were shoving back and forth at the uh, top of the... Uh, but but I you're right, that, that always happens. Yeah. I don't, that's kind of how it goes now. I don't know if the Mets were just trying to help them hype the fight, but... Uh, this Garcia kid did some more cussing afterwards, uh, this time at the Mets. He was on social media cussing out the Mets for not letting him throw out a pitch. So I. Yeah, when I saw that, I was like, all right, good call then, Mets. <laughs> Mentally drunk, but not physically drunk, Jesus has a lame claim to fame, as he called it. He said he knows a lady that evaluates every broken bat in Major League Baseball to come up with ways to make them stronger. That's her job. Huh. That is mm. really cool. Yeah. Hmm. Hmm. 
All right. And a few people are texting and offering their trees to make bats for the uh, NCAA. <laughs> I don't know what's going on here. Other people are texting in on the cost of this and that. I, I don't know what this guy means. Hockey spends 300 to $500 on sticks, and they break two to three times a year. I'm not. Where, where's he going with that? I'm not sure what he means by uh, that. Hockey sticks cost like two to $300. They break super easy, and you go through about four of them. I don't know that, how that's a comparison what? to the bat thing. I don't get that. He's just I, saying I, it's I, more I, expensive. I, I, He's saying what is more expensive? He, hockey stick, hockey equipment. And I think they he's break. saying... Then baseball bats. Yeah. Okay. I don't, I don't he's know. wondering why bats would break more, I'm assuming. Hmm. Well, well when you have a 100-mile-an-hour fastball coming in on one of them and you hit it on the wrong spot, it's going to break. Yeah. 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 I don't know. Whatever. Uh, last night's NBA play-in games put on the Western Conference edition. The L.A. Lakers beat the New Orleans Pelicans by a final final of 110 to 106. So the Lakers win the seventh seed in the Western Conference playoff setup. They won the right to play a best of seven series against the Denver Nuggets. As Brad explained yesterday, now New Orleans will try to officially get themselves in the playoff by playing the winner of the other play-in game from last night, the Sacramento Kings. The Kings beat Golden State last night by quite a bit. Isn't it a beautiful thing to have the Golden State Warriors out of the playoffs right from the damn get-go? <laughs> and they chant, light the beam here in Sacramento. And they're going to do just that. Two great friends, Mike Brown and Steve Kerr, an embrace. Largest margin of victory since 2006. I watched like the first half, maybe part of the third quarter too of that game before I went to bed. That the Warriors just didn't I don't know, it just it was weird. They just didn't seem like they wanted to to be there, you know? I mean, they played okay. Well, probably because they're a bunch of entitled douchebags well, that probably thought they didn't deserve to be there. Clay Thompson was 0 for 10. He didn't score in the game. Good. <laughs> I bet they also, too, were kind of like, you know, I'm kind of over this whole playoff thing. I, yeah. want, the, I, want, the, I want the offseason I, that's to start. The sense, that's the sense I got about midway through the third quarter when they were down 15. You know, I, they just didn't seem like they had a run in them at all. I've done this. I'm bored with it. Yeah. <laughs> Get me on the so golf course. So long, suckers. I've had enough the kings and pelicans will play friday night in louisiana and the winner gets that number eight spot who plays the oklahoma city thunder kings and pelicans brad Ryder. yeah so so either oklahoma city the kings or the thunder i'm sorry the kings the pelicans or the thunder will be in the western conference semifinals one of those three teams which will be kind of cool. Mm-hmm. New team in there. Now, tonight, the Eastern Conference play-in games happen. 6 o'clock, the Miami Heat are at the Philadelphia 76ers at 8.30, the Atlanta Hawks at the Chicago Bulls. We have game times yes. for the mm-hmm. Wolves Sun Series for the first four games. We finally look like we're catching a little, just a little bit of a break when it comes to game times. Yeah, the home, I don't know if you talked about them yesterday or not. but the, Not yet. Okay, game one is 2.30 oh, Saturday afternoon. That is, that's a sweet spot that's right there. Beautiful. Yeah, absolutely 2.30 beautiful. Saturday afternoon. Game two is Tuesday. You, well, you know, those three days between games again, which we all love. Oh, but uh, two, Tuesday night at 6.30. Yep. So that's a good time. And then when we go to Phoenix, obviously it's going to be a little bit later game time. Friday, game three is Friday, a week from Friday at 9.30. That's all right. It's Friday night. Yep. And game four is Sunday night at 8.30. And I can live with that one, too. I can live with it. And like you're saying, the days between games, Brad, I saw that if the series goes seven games, it'll take a full two weeks to, to, to finish the whole series. If it goes to game seven, it will be on May 4. Yep. It's so horrible. <laughs> it's so absolutely horrible. We got two, two, game, or two days between games one and two, and we got two ga- days between games two and three. I'm tired of being effed. <laughs> It's just so horrible the way they play this stuff out. And hockey <laughs> hockey does the same thing. It just takes for effing ever. All right. I, I, I had more basketball stuff, but we we ran low on time. But we'll come back to some other basketball stuff. But uh, at this point, at 8 a.m. here, it's going to be an emotional thing, don't you think, Josh? Is it kind of a bittersweet thing? <laughs> I, yeah, it is. Our I last? Mean, last week was tougher. Mm-hmm. Than it yeah. is this week, but yeah, still, still always tough. Our last Minnesota Wild report. Half-assed morning show. Ninety-three X.
I hear you. And I got to start with this. I mean, I just got a text from a listener. Mind-blowing. He texted in, hockey sticks used to be predominantly wood, and now they're carbon fiber and stuff. <laughs> and stuff. <laughs> and stuff. God, what? They, they jammed some stuff in there. When the hell did that happen? <laughs> you can't just spring that kind of information on a guy by hand. <laughs> he talked about hockey sticks used to be predominantly wood, and now they're carbon fiber and stuff. What are you talking about? <laughs> Yeah, Josh is right. Last week, it will probably prove to be the most, much more emotional goodbye type feeling around it because we were talking to Marcus Foligno for the final, final time. He left town already. He said he's not even going to, not even sticking around to watch that final game. No, I'm kidding. He'll be around. <laughs> the the uh, final, final is tomorrow. Where's your bar gig tomorrow night now, Wapple? I don't have one. We're Good. done. Oh, Good. this is bittersweet. Yeah, no, it's so, not. Mm-hmm. So tomorrow, everyone who won tickets for the last 10 weeks or whatever we were doing it will be going to the game tomorrow. They should not even show up just to spite you. <laughs> <laughs> Wapple's in the suite by himself. Go team! <laughs> Did they get you tickets to the suite or they get them all away. No, I got tickets. You did. Nice. Yep. yep. Final final you. game of the season tomorrow night, six o'clock against a completely unnecessary Seattle crack in the games. Uh, we we'll, can we'll cover that tomorrow. Neither team's headed to the playoff, but it is fan appreciation night. It's going to be a carnival-like atmosphere no, tomorrow. Night. It's going to be a lot of heart checking in that game, I'm sure. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> really, really going into the corners yeah. for the pucks. Right. Bunch you of know, fights. <laughs> You know what uh, fans get tomorrow for fan appreciation night, Josh? Couple Ooh. things, right? Oh yeah, they get a poster. Ooh. Nice. And they're also doing a gimmick called jerseys off our back. They're going to auction off jerseys. You know, game worn jerseys. Yeah. Many many years ago, I went to a Pigs game. Maybe it was in their inaugural season. And at the final final game, I got my hands on a game worn jersey mm. from a player. Name the player. Go. Well, how? What was the time frame again? You're incorrect. Okay. (laughs) I think it was the inaugural season. He was a big, tall defenseman. He may have even made an all-star team back in those days. Go! Um. You just had the right sound right there. (laughs) Keep going. Full long Chino. You're close. (laughs) You're close. Philippe Kuba. Oh, Oh, nice. Yeah. Would be cool if it was a Falong Chino jersey, but Falong Chino. That sounds like something you could order at a Starbucks. Yeah, it does. <laughs> so, he so, was suspended for life. So the Wolves for do exposing that. himself uh, to uh, a, a group of penguins at a zoo. <laughs> he was. He was. He was uh, suspended for life. What's that, Brad? So, so, so the Wolves do that jersey off the back thing too. And when when I worked there, I got a quick story. So when I worked there, somebody on our staff. I don't remember whose jersey it was. It was after the game, and they bring out all the jerseys. The players take them off, and they bring them out on hangers and stuff. And then the people who want to bid on them stick around, you know, in the lower bowl to to bid on them. I think it was just a Chase Budinger. Remember him? Oh, sure. yeah. I liked okay. him a lot. So mm-hmm. his jersey... His jersey wasn't getting bid on, oh, no. uh, and so one of my staff members decided to to bid on it just to get the bidding going, <laughs> and then and then and then some, somebody no seriously, and then somebody else in the in the audience you know decided to bid on it too. So he kept going to try to bid it up, but he ended up getting stuck with, with the jersey. <laughs> I think for like three hundred bucks or something like that. <laughs> Well, I da- it goes to charity, right? <laughs> yeah, it does. Yeah. I dated a girl. She was a college hockey player, and she told me back, you know, she played at D1 school, and they did a thing in November of breast cancer awareness. They wore pink jerseys. And then after the game, they put the jerseys online for people to bid on. She's like, well, we didn't really have any fans. There might be a, a smattering of friends in the audience. So... <laughs> Nobody bid on the jerseys. So <laughs> the jerseys cost more to make than they actually raised to, to donate oh, to charity. Yeah. <laughs> uh, online is the way to go with that stuff now, though, because like back in the day when you have to have the jerseys out there physically, and then you have to walk back in the locker room as a PR person, and then all the players, what's the first question they ask? How, how much, much, how much did my jersey go for? Uh-huh. Um, like 100 bucks. Sorry, <laughs> <but> no. <laughs> so if you're going to this game tomorrow night, it says here, this sounds just a little one more side note here on the final final tomorrow night with the pigs and the totally unnecessary Seattle Kraken. Uh, Game starts at 6 o'clock it says here. Yeah, uh, between starting at 4.30 
They're going to be putting on some wild team trivia there in the rink. They say it's happening at a joint called the Mick Golden Light Tap Out. I bet I would whoop ass at wild team trivia. Oh, yeah, you would. Somebody, oh, yeah. somebody look up some wild trivia. Dump a couple questions on me. From mm. this year? I wonder, like, what the time frame is there. What? What? Do you, what? Like this season? I'm wondering what, what if they're just trying to, you know, hey, here's what happened this season, or if it's just... The oh, whole time they've been I, around. I bet it's uh, going back to the you know beginning all the way through type of a situation. All right, I'm going to try to find a yeah, question and up. dump you yeah. here. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, in 2008, sure. Andrew Burnett signed a three-year contract for what total amount of money? Oh, give me a break! <laughs> Come on, that's not you, you, you know that's not a legit question. Fifteen was the jersey number he wore. Okay. All right, go ahead. Oh, I got one. Go, go ahead. Who scored the first goal in Wild franchise history? Darby Hendrickson. Oh, that's not one of the answers. Oh, no. Darby scored the first home goal. Uh, mm-hmm. The first road goal was uh, Marion Gorbiak. Yep. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I win. Who was the first ever draft pick I selected win, by the Wild? I said. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> the first ever draft pick? Yeah. Would it also be Gorbiak? Uh, hold on now. Wait, you don't have the answer in front of you? It's a multiple choice <laughs> thing. It's making me submit yeah, the yeah, yeah. Just, just get back to me. I want to I want to get to <laughs> this here. Gabrick. Wop, pardon me? Gabrick. Yeah, okay, I, I win. Wopple, didn't you just yesterday say something about, you were joking around, about a disrespectful, sissy-ass, empty net goal possibly sending a team to the playoffs? No, I was talking about who was the guy that needed one more assist to make uh, 100. And okay. I said that it would be funny if he dished the puck off to someone else and they scored an empty net goal. Right. But I'm going to give you credit because you just brought up that scenario yesterday. Wouldn't that be interesting if that, that you know 100th assist was on an empty net goal? How disrespectful... <laughs> You are like the Muppet version of Nostradamus because last night, was it last night, the Washington Capitals clinched a playoff spot because of an empty net goal. <laughs> now, this is kind of hard to follow. I'll do my, uh, hopefully you can follow this. TJ Oshie, his empty net goal, remind me to throw his jersey away that I have hanging in the closet. <laughs> TJ Oshie's empty net goal, late in the third period, in a 1 1 tie hockey game. Helped the Capitals beat the Flyers 2-1 last night. The score was tied. The Flyers coach, that nutbag John Tortorella, when are people going to be done hiring him? (laughs) He pulled his goalie for an extra attacker because his team needed to win in regulation to keep their playoff hopes alive. Again, this is kind of hard to follow. Tortorella, uh, whatever. What he didn't know was that Detroit had forced overtime in Montreal like a minute earlier, which actually eliminated the Flyers right then and there. (laughs) He didn't know his team was already eliminated. He takes this chance. He pulls the goalie. Then Oshie gets the empty net goal that gets the Capitals into the kind of a bizarre... Some mm-hmm. quality control coach is getting fired there today. Somebody who's sitting in the press, you know what I mean? They're Somebody supposed who's to tug yes. on his suit at that very second and tell him? Yes. Okay. Yeah, somebody's so, somebody's in trouble. So now they're going to be out of the playoffs, right? Because they don't get any points, right? Yes. Yeah. I, I think that's... So now the Flyers would be back in? No. Oh, you okay. you got to know all those scenarios before the game, and you got to have somebody watching the scoreboard and signaling down or something. Wow, that's... That's insane. The that's whole funny. thing is it's like a mind bend. That somebody's getting fired there, man. So by the result of Oshie's stupid empty net goal, which you never... <laughs> should have happened and it never should happen in any hockey game Detroit and the Pittsburgh Penguins were eliminated there goes Washington into the playoffs <laughs> they'll play the Rangers who apparently got the number one seed in the Eastern Conference I like this ca- comment from uh, Alex Ovechkin of course the captain of the Capitals he said we'll take it thanks Philly <laughs> <laughs> so listeners have been Given us some, you know, historical information on uh, uh, different sports, right? We learned about the composite and wood sticks in the NHL. Here's another NHL stat. I didn't realize this. <laughs> the jerseys that they used to wear in the NHL were made out of wood. <laughs> <laughs> Just like the sticks. Is that true? Yeah, thank you for the text. Huh. 
I got this too, Josh. <laughs> You're right. Historical stuff up and down, sideways this morning on the program with Brad Ryder. Uh, broken, lifted 79 Chevy Jesus. His dad had a game used bat from an extremely famous Twins player. He doesn't name the player, but I trust him. He says it was an extremely famous Twins player, a game used bat. Dad got it. But his abusive drunk mother broke it. Oh, oh that sucks, no. dude. Oh, that does suck. All right, was that it for? I thought I had one more hockey note. I got all fired up over here and I started throwing papers around. Minnesota Wild Report brought to you by Luther Kia of Bloomington. Uh, yeah, that's it. I thought I had one more hockey thing. If I run into it, I'll, I'll holler at you. All right. Oh, I, I, I mentioned I wanted to go back to basketball. Jesus, the time has just been flying here. All right. I'm going to save this. This is a, a big basketball story, but I'm going to save it for Randy Shaver because I imagine he'll be back tomorrow. Big basketball story. I hope you don't mind. No. But we'll save it for Randy Shaver. I think he wants to chime in on that son of a bitch. He does. Uh, Blake Griffin retired from the NBA, Brad Ryder. Yep. Okay. Good player. Good yep, player. Good player. Seems like a nice enough guy. He's been kind of dabbling in uh, stand-up comedy for a yeah. few years, and yeah. I think he's going to go full-time into that the way it sounds. Yeah, we played a little bit earlier. He does. He is funny. Mm -hmm. Yeah. We talked about that. Yeah, a little bit of stand-up comedy maybe. Maybe he'll go on tour with, uh, oh, I don't know. Nikki Glaser. Yeah. This will have to wrap it up for us, I imagine. Uh, for you nipple ring wearing skateboarders with your alternative haircuts and your lack of respect for society's rules. <laughs> Are we going to see skateboarding in the Olympics this summer? Is that when they throw in the skateboarding in the summer? You know, I'm not sure. I, 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 I it makes know. sense, right? So they, yeah. can, do it, yeah. they can do it out of yep. doors? Okay. Yeah. Or, but, but then again, it, it doesn't always get approved every Olympics. Sometimes they come and go, so I don't know. Uh, Japan has a new television show. And they say it's a real-life Tony Hawk pro skater. It looks awesome. Which is yeah. a, a video game? Yes. Mm -hmm. A real-life version of the Tony Hawk's pro skater video game. It's uh, they, Some folks call it a Ninja Warrior on skateboards. It's called Caso. And I saw the videos, and I'm not much of a... I, I, you know, Wapo and I sometimes go back and forth on the old skateboarding 80s guys. You know, we talk about... I, I, Josh and I, we, we watched those videos when we were... But I never got really dialed into skateboarding. But I watched the videos of this friggin' television show, and this looks pretty effing cool. I don't even know how long it must take to put together these obstacle courses that these guys are skateboarding and uh, they'll, they'll be skating up and down and down a big hill and around a corner and then through a cage and then someone throws turds at them and then they <laughs> and then they, they have to do a, a rail slide over a body of water filled with a uh, piranha it's mm -hmm. just you you got us is this up on our website yep that's really really fun looking they started this show uh this month it's already the number one show in japan Aside from the Mr. Big documentary. <laughs> um, you just got to see it. Yeah, yeah it looks it's very fun. Cool. It's almost like Wipeout, but with skateboarding. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. yeah. Very similar. Yep. I was going to watch Wipeout until I saw that John Cena was one of the hosts. <laughs> oh, you got to get past that. Oh, wait, I, I was thinking. I'm not going to get past because it. Because it is fun watching people, watching people eat it. I, yeah. and, I, and I like John Cena. I do. He's a very nice guy. I just have had enough. What, what doesn't one? he host? Right. Quite a bit. What, uh, uh, meaning he does quote, uh, he does host quite a bit. What was the one with The Miz? Was that Wipeout or is very similar? He was funny on that show. I can't mm. think of it, Josh, but yeah, oh, I watched that once or twice. Yeah, he I had some good was, comments. I think it was Wipeout. Just a different version of it. Uh, some more facts from listeners on sports. This is yes. great. Fun hockey fact. Did you know the ice used to be made out of wood? <laughs> <laughs> and Warhammer Painting Jesus, is he's taking us over to the NBA, he said, fun fact, up until 1993... All NBA balls were made out of wood and trees and stuff. Oh, <laughs> and stuff. Man. The Miz yeah. was on a show called Cannonball. Ah, that's uh, it. Yep, Cannonball. Similar like concept, show. I imagine. Similar. Yeah. yeah. There you go. Well, Brad, despite showing up hammered, I thought you did quite well all by yourself. <laughs> yeah, with, I, uh, I sobered up. Yeah. Yeah. 
you probably get right back on it now when we let you go. No, I got to walk into a classroom. So you got to go to work. Oh, you got to go to work now. Yep. You got to go to work. Put a little Bailey's in that coffee. Yeah. yeah. Treat yourself, man. Boy, Tell my the kids grandpa, we say hi. My grandma used to I put will. a lot of Bailey's in that coffee. <laughs> more, <laughs> the more, oh, the better. More Bailey's than coffee. She loved that stuff. <laughs> have you ever? Have you walked into class late and said, "Sorry, I was on a big time radio show." Uh, not yet. Why don't, you, why don't you throw some big-time garbage at the kids today? Tell, should, them, tell them what a big shot you are. I should assign one of the podcasts sometime and see what they think of it. You, oh, have them listen to it? Oh. Have them listen to oh, one of the podcasts, yeah. Assign it to... Yeah. You have to li- yeah. That'd be great. And ask questions and give them a quiz on it. That, that would be awesome. God, I wish everybody did that. That'd be so good for ratings. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Brad Ryder. All right. Thank you. You're welcome. Take see it you. easy yep. on the young people. We'll talk to you uh, on what day is it today? We'll talk to Brad on uh, Friday. we got to take a break. We'll be back here in a few minutes. Half-assed morning show. They're loud. They lose control. They do their little circus act. They're a nuisance. 93X. Our experienced and certified technicians at Standard Heating have been trusted to keep our fellow Minnesotans comfortable and confident for over 90 years. We're ready to do the same for you, providing comfort you deserve since 1930. It is the triple savings spring sale at Standard Heating and Air Conditioning. Install a new furnace and AC combo and save up to $3,000 with manufacturer and utility rebates along with Standard Heating's discount. That's a trifecta. Visit standardheating.com. Former Navy SEAL Sean Ryan shares real stories from real people from all walks of life on The Sean Ryan Show. Comedian John Christ. How long have you been in Nashville? Let's see, 2018 is when I moved here. I lived in an apartment. I didn't know anything about it. I lived in L.A. You were living in L.A.? How was that? Yeah. Let's see. Good for my career. Sent me to rehab, though. So (laughs) (laughs) that's pretty much the sum of it. The Sean Ryan Show on YouTube or wherever you listen. Just be mindful, move out of the way, and just move on. The 93X Half-Assed Morning Show. Here we set, don't we, Josh? Here we set at uh, 831 on the 93X Half-Assed Morning Show. It has gone fast today. Mm -hmm. You said earlier. It's blown by. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's gone pretty quickly. Gone by faster than you can say. It helped when Dana had a long story earlier and I fell asleep. I got into good nap. <laughs> I did that monologue just for you. I, I was like, you know, you know, Josh looks a little tired. Yeah. I know he didn't get a lot enough sleep last night. That's true. I'm going to tell a long-winded 20-minute story. <laughs> it was refreshing, and I thank you for it. Very much that. I'm oh, here to help. Oh, kind of getting sleepy again. <laughs> some bitch has got some lungs on him. All right, who here hates their boss? I do. I love our boss. I don't like yeah, I'm not, I love I'm not, our boss. I'm not kissing butt. I no. mean, it's the first boss we've had that has been uh, awesome. I don't like the guy. And you guys better say you you love your boss, because how could you not love Josh? <laughs> He's the best. So I'm the only one here that hates the boss. I don't think okay. you hate the boss. Yeah, I believe so. if you do truly hate the boss, you're the only one here. <laughs> You guys got to open your eyes. We've mentioned this before, but we've threatened our boss. Sheeple. That's what you guys are. If he ever leaves us, we will either kill him mm-hmm. or we will get him canceled. <laughs> and, and just with, we'll make up some horrible, horrible stuff to make sure he can never work anywhere else again. Yep. Just ruin his life. Mm-hmm. The, no choice but to ruin his life. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. The friggin' boss. Boy, some of you's got it bad. Yeah, I've ah. never really had a... Very terrible boss. I've had very like, terrible. Oh yes, you have. <laughs> You've never had a very terrible boss. Am jo- I, am Josh I seems to think you're forgetting yeah. somebody. Unless, wait, well, did you start with Derek? Yes, I did. Oh, okay. I thought you were here a little before that. No, no, no I was lucky. No, <laughs> I've been here for that guy. I've been here a little over five years. So, oh, no, I thought I've been, been lucky. longer. Yeah, six years in September. Woo! But um, just can't imagine you. Not in my life, Ashley. That's all that is. Oh, Josh, me either. But um, I've had like weird bosses, kind of like creepy vibes. But I've never had one where I'm like, just absolutely hate them. No, nah, I've had it easy too, um, for the most part. Um, oh, wait a minute. Maybe it hasn't been that easy. I was <laughs> at first. I was picturing pre-radio. Mm. That's where that I've had it easy comment came from. Pre-radio, there was only one boss, you know, back in my warehouse job type days. That was a, he was a stiff bastard. He was he was just stiff as a board. There was no getting the sum bitch to smile. It was all serious all the time. 
once I got into radio, oh yeah. Oh, there's been some bad ones. <laughs> yes, there have. Some of you have it bad, real bad, and then I I pass on my sympathies because it sucks. It sucks when you can't stand the friggin' boss. I'm the boss, I'm the boss, I'm the boss, I'm the boss, I'm the boss. What movie? Raging Bull, 1980, Robert De Niro. There's a new law coming smooth out of California, and we've heard something similar to this, Josh. Help me out. A new law that wants to stop your boss from hassling you outside of normal work hours. This is not the first that this has come up. Yeah, it's um, you know, newer in the States, but I know some other countries have experimented with this before. So that's where we heard about it before, from countries uh, from far away. But now here it is. It's made it to California. Wants to make it a law to uh, stop your boss from hassling you outside of normal work hours. It would give folks the legal right to ignore any non-emergency calls and emails once, say, 5 o'clock hits. You know, you'd you'd have to sit down with your boss and establish what the working hours are, you know, right? You get all that worked yeah. out. And then once you get that worked out and you say, let's say the, uh, the uh, it's five o'clock. If that effing guy or gal contacts you after five, they've broken the law. <laughs> that's a biz- that's and really bizarre to me. They go because right to jail. I, I think of uh, like my boyfriend's job. He's in, he's in sales and every day is different. And like if, if they have to contact him, like he's he's not mad about it. He's like, well, this is my job. This is what I do. I, I if they want to call me at seven p.m. I'm gonna answer. Well, it's the same thing here. Yeah, how, th- that's how, just how, how is, it should how be. How is your boyfriend's job? Do- this is exactly what we got to deal with. But wouldn't it be beautiful to just say no? You cannot. Yeah. I mean, uh, of course, the easy answer is you just don't answer your phone or your email. Yeah, and that's what I've been doing for years. <laughs> uh, but wouldn't it be beautiful just to know? There's absolutely no way you could say jack squat to me after a certain time. It'd be great. Uh, what was the law we were just talking about the other day? Boy, the law is getting creative. What was it the other day? <laughs> uh, if you oh, uh, if in Oklahoma, if you pass an STD onto someone knowingly, mm. yeah, you you'd be a felon. Yeah, well, you'd be a felon. I don't know what grade this kind of offense would be. So if it becomes a law. In California, any boss that violates the rule could face a fine of at least $100 or a year in jail. I'm kidding. Uh, It'd be a fine of at least $100 for pissing you off, for bugging you on the nights, weekends, after five, whatever the situation you you two agree on. I feel like the employee should get that fine. They should be the one that receives the money, the 100 bucks. Oh, yeah. Where does the the money go? Don't don't kick it to the state or anything. Pizza party at the end of the year. (laughs) Oh, here you go, Josh. You mentioned it was coming away from... This law was coming this way from foreign countries. Uh, Australia had this cooking for a while, or maybe it's still happening, called the Right to Disconnect Law. You can fine your boss for voicemails and emails when you're not looking to play the game. Yeah, there's about 10 countries that have this rule already. Oh, France, Canada, Portugal... And, uh, you know, the the ongoing theme is there's a blurred line now of when we're on or off duty that started when that pandemic hit town and everyone was working from home, working remote, as they say. And that was the start of it all. The recent survey said here that 55% of people, over half of us, respond to emails or other messages outside of work hours for fear that they will be reprimanded. Yeah, I just, uh, I, I, I almost never, ever answer the phone or look up emails from people other than the four of you. <laughs> but, and that's been fine. That's, that's fine. But I, I do, sometimes I get in trouble and sometimes I miss deadlines and whatnot. So there's good and bad. It'd be a beautiful thing just to have a hard set hour. Mm-hmm. You know, I know guys who, couple guys, it depends on who you are. I know two guys who have basically the same job. They're on call. I don't want to say what it is they do. But it's funny because, you know, when, when they're on call, they're expected to answer that call 
answer that text, whatever it is. One of them, when that phone buzzes, I mean, they hop off that bar stool. Okay, guys, got to go. <laughs> the other one orders another round. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and just he just looks at his phone and goes, ah, next guy will handle it. Yep. It would be a beautiful thing just to turn it all off at one point of the day and be like, all right, well, I'm done until tomorrow. You could just program do not answer into the contact information for your work number. <laughs> just to give you a little reminder. Do any of you have a story where you got that phone call or text message or email when you were in the middle of something important and it pissed you off a little bit? Well, I had one. Um, I at My last radio station job, we... Would, we had a lot of concerts we had to do and we'd always have to be there to bring the band on stage and do stage announcements. You guys know how that works. And one time I, I told my boss, hey, I can't make it to the stage announcement on Saturday. It was a small concert. I'm officiating my sister's wedding. And he called me during. He goes, hey, when are you going to get here? I go, well, I'm, I'm officiating my sister's wedding. He goes, well, yeah, can't you just Uber over to the wedding and then just go back to your sister's wedding? No, I'm not leaving my sister's wedding to go bring up Johnny and the doodads on stage for 200 people at some small concert. That's insane. He legit was like bewildered that I wasn't going to leave my sister's wedding to go bring up a band on stage. And I he, remember that story. Yeah. He was just blown away. Like, are you you're seriously not coming? No, I told you. <laughs> yeah. I had something similar where I went to a funeral. Um, one of my wife's relatives passed and I had said, you know, weeks ahead, hey, I, I got this funeral on, or not, maybe not weeks because mm-hmm. the guy passed. It was like a, maybe a couple weeks, two weeks. But it was weeks ahead. Anyways, I said, <laughs> uh, I, I got this thing, you know, just if, if whatever you got for me, just give me a heads up. I'll get it because this was prior to Memorial Day. So we were off the following Monday and I got a call. I missed a couple calls during the ceremony or whatever, the funeral. And um, some people, you know, they were freaking out because they needed something to be done by Monday. And I had to leave. I couldn't go to the little after get together because of that. So oh, that, so you had to like leave before? Yeah, funeral, which I had said, you know, hey, mm-hmm. I got this thing going on. So, yeah, that's definitely frustrating. That sucks. How about a little inside industry stuff, Josh? I know it's going to be above a lot of our listeners' heads, <laughs> this inside industry stuff. That's my imitation of an old boss who used to think that our listeners were morons. Remember that guy, Josh? Yeah, that was frustrating. That was really frustrating. And you, if I remember what the uh, topic was that 93X listeners wouldn't be aware of, it was conference calls. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, hey, that don't, was good. don't reference conference calls. Your listeners aren't going to know what that is. I'm like, okay, is it that difficult to figure out, even if you've never heard of a conference call? Which everybody, by the way, has. Everyone has heard of a conference call. Yeah, there was, a, as you've heard us mention before, there was a, a massive ongoing problem in radio that has, luckily, it started to, to diminish a little bit. And the ongoing problem in radio was that radio personalities and radio program directors thought of themselves as the most important swinging D's in town. We are the, we're the folks who bring you everything. We're on air, you're not. You're just a listener. Really, honestly, there were people who had that mindset and they would say things to Josh and I, such demeaning, disrespectful stuff about what they perceived to be the intelligence level of our listening audience to where we were just we were just completely shocked. Like, who do you think you are? So anyway, on that topic, uh, on that topic, I was saying we've run into some bad bosses here over the years. Okay, a listener texted in with some inside stuff, but I want to bring it up anyway because it's a fun subject. Uh, This listener, Grand Slam Jesus, says, I'm curious about your comment on bad past bosses here at the radio station. Uh, Was, I'm not going to use the full name, but was a guy named Scott, and Josh, you already know who I'm talking about. Was he one of your bad bosses? Uh, I met him a few years ago. I thought he was a tool. I thought he looked like Woody Woodpecker. Let me, <laughs> let me tell you something, Grand Slam Jesus. You could not be more wrong. That dude was one of the good guys. Yeah, he, he was. was. He, mm-hmm. He's and the a reason. Funny, funny, great guy. He's mm-hmm. the reason none of us are, 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 you know, we were on the verge of bankruptcy, but thanks to him, you know, we're not anymore. Well, we're still on the verge, but a little further away from <laughs> him. Now, did he dress like a dork? Absolutely. But did, he was a great guy. He does look like Woody Woodpecker. Yes, he does. Yeah, he does. 
And remember, he'd walk in the studio, and it's, this is a guy, like, he'd put him next to the word corporate in the dictionary, his <laughs> face. He'd be like, what's up, bitches? <laughs> that was his thing. Yeah, I mean, no, yeah. he was one of the good ones. I know some people don't feel the same as we do, but I, I always thought he was pretty great. One night, he and I, you know, he and I and Josh became kind of bros for a while there. Scott, if anyone knows who we're talking about, tell him we said hello. He... He uh, he wanted to hang out on a weekend, and so I said, "Well, I play pocket billiards on a Saturday night. Why don't you come out to the joint where I play pocket bill?" And uh, you know, he walks into this blue collar bar with uh, some hardcore, you know, Vietnam veterans hanging around in there, right? Yeah. He, he never been there before. He walks in with his sweater uh, over a collared shirt, right? Looking like a total dork with his little glasses and his little spiky hairdo. He walks up into the bar. Doesn't know anybody in there but me. And he says, what's going on, bitches? <laughs> That's adorable. And, and he, some of these guys at the bar looked around like, are you looking for trouble, pal? <laughs> but he didn't care. He's a, fun, he's a great guy. Oh, yeah. I thought he was awesome. Half Assed Morning Show 93X. Uh, yeah, you know what we were talking about? We were talking about the boss. Good bosses and bad bosses. There's a proposed law in California, just a heads up, where maybe one day it'll all become law, where, uh, you know, if you establish a certain time with your boss and you say you can't call me or email me after this specific time, if the two of you agree on that and your boss calls or emails you, he or she will be breaking the law and they'll be fined. For a lot of you, I bet that's beautiful news. So we've been talking about bosses. We've had some bad ones. Today, these days, our bosses are terrific. Couldn't be happier. Really, honestly, that's not sarcasm. Mm -hmm. We couldn't be happier. We're very lucky right now. So I got to go back to this. Grand Slam Jesus texted a few minutes ago. He was texting about an old boss we used to have here by the name of Scott. Grand Slam Jesus said he met Scott one time and thought he was a douche. He met Scott because he was... He was, uh, you know, uh, one of those folks who used to waste their time listening back in the day to the old KQ morning show. (laughs) (laughs) So he met Scott through a KQ gig, thought he was a douche. Looks can be deceiving because Scott didn't look cool. We established he never looked cool. But I have to tell one more story about him. There was this co-worker of ours years ago and Josh and I did not like this guy at all and and the guy he was not a likable person Josh and I did not like this guy Scott knew it so one day while Josh and I are sitting with Scott here comes the co-worker we didn't like and uh, Scott made an effort to put on a little show for us when the guy we didn't like walked by it just so happened that Scott's uh, email no a fax machine printer that's the word Scott's printer went off in the other room And Scott, to show that he was bonded with us and also didn't like this other guy, Scott says to the guy, Hey, hey, Skippy. (laughs) (laughs) Would you go grab that email? uh, What's the word again? Would you go grab that paper off the printer for me? Hey, (laughs) Skippy. Skippy. Oh, that's insulting. Oh, my God. I I, I had to hold in my laugh so hard. Uh, I got to be honest. the guy Skippy. Skippy didn't seem to like that (laughs) at all. Oh, I bet Skippy did not. Was not a fan. (laughs) No, I don't think he liked that one bit. So there was some, uh, you know, there was some more bad boss information. Well, here's some texts that have come in from our listeners on bad bosses and bosses bugging you at all hours, right? Uh, here's a guy who says, I used to do engineering support for a 24-7 manufacturing facility. More than once I got called about broken down machines while I was in the middle of sex. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> you must be doing it a lot. Yeah. Big Bouncer Jesus says, I do sales. My boss would call me. My boss called me while my wife was giving birth to our first child, despite me calling him earlier in the day to tell him what was going on. Yeah. Uh, come on. It does suck. The That's wife's so busy. going to press out this kid. Can you not? Boss called him anyway. Yeah, my boyfriend has had uh, customers call while we're doing the deed quite quite often. He usually just ignores it, though. One of usually? our list- <laughs> Sometimes you got to stop. It's somebody important. Yeah. I've taken those calls before. <laughs> Have you ever said, you know, your judgment on who's important is a little off, or was he right every time? He's usually right. That's yep. good. Or I'll usually be like, you. I mean, like, we can take a break. Like, you should probably answer that. No, 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 it's fine. They can wait. All right. So he does check who's calling at least. Yeah. Oh, yeah. 
This happens a lot in radio, I think. Here's a listener that says, I started a new job recently. My boss from my old job still texts me asking me questions about how things work. <laughs> <laughs> Block that number. That's funny. <laughs> and one final uh, text I got here from a listener. One final, at least on the listener's end. Um, this individual says, my last boss can suck it, suck it, suck it. And when he's done sucking it, his friends and family can suck it again. <laughs> <laughs> It ain't easy out there sometimes. Folks on Reddit were talking about their bosses being, you know, way too over the top, contacting them at all hours. One of them brought up a bad memory for me. Uh, and here's the story. I was on my honeymoon. The boss kept emailing me nonstop. She was intentionally wording them to make me feel guilty for having the audacity to take a honeymoon saying things like, oh, there's going to be a lot you'll have to catch up on when you're back. It's really a shame you aren't here for this meeting. Oh, God. Just blow me. So mm-hmm. then she can't. E- they can't even like really enjoy their honeymoon the right. way they want mm-hmm. to. You're pissed off. Yeah, you're you know? annoyed. You, you, got, you spend your honeymoon venting about yeah. your boss. You have work anxiety in the back of your head the whole time. And it brings me back to one of the hottest I've ever been here in this business. But I couldn't do jack about it because I was new. The lowest paid guy in the building by far up until Josh came along. (laughs) And I was lucky enough to go off to see the Super Bowl. And I was still a young guy and I still thought football was a real sport. I was very excited to go to the Super Bowl. Well, I'd have to miss Monday's broadcast. And the guy who was our boss at the time, it was straight up jealousy that just like this honeymoon, you know, You know, the boss was jealous that this worker was off having the time of her life, right? So I'm going to make it miserable for him. So I I go into the boss's office and said, hey, I'm going to see the Super Bowl down in New Orleans. I'm not going to be here on Monday, just to let you know. Number one, I I wasn't making balls, okay? I wasn't even there every day of the week. Also, on a side note, at that point in my career, because I was still going to school and this and that. So... You know, what's the problem? There was no problem. It shouldn't have been a big deal at all that I was going to miss Monday's broadcast. But I think because the guy was jealous and just because he was a born prick, he says, well, fine, but you're not just going to go off and just, you know, have, you know, the weekend all to yourself. You're going to come back with some audio. Oh, jeez. Interview some people at the Super Bowl. Get some funny... You see what I'm saying? Yeah. So now, instead of being able to relax and have a great time all weekend long, I'm carrying around this stupid recording machine and trying to pick out people. Oh, I wonder if they would be good for a funny bit. What about this person, that person, before the game, after the game? Oh, it's miserable. And it was all out of jealousy and just because dicks got to be dicks. Mm-hmm. And there was nothing I can do about now. In the end, I, I'll, I'll tell you this. I made very little effort. <laughs> <laughs> very, very, very little effort. And, 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 and then, of course, when I bring the audio back and it's not usable in their opinion, then I get berated oh. again. And, I, and that's when I, I actually did kind of blow up and said, you know, pay me more than $4 an hour, okay? It, it just was such nonsense. And, it, and it, none of it came from a good place, you know. I, can, so. I mean, you can have a job that you love, but if you have a boss or even a coworker that's terrible, boy, does that change things. It absolutely yep. does. I'd it rather ha- just work somewhere where I just don't like the work. I mean, that'd be less stressful yeah. and, you know, I, than dealing with a guy like that that just won't get off your butt for stupid stuff. And you know, if he went, I know who you're talking about, if he went to the Super Bowl, there's no way he would put forth any work oh, whatsoever. That nope. makes it worse. Nope. So he it's would, not like he's like, you know, we are at the Super Bowl. What a great opportunity. We got to get this audit. He would never do that. Nope. A matter of fact, he would have taken the entire week after all. Sure. <laughs> yep. And just and then, then told us how wasted he got, you know, how much funny. No, no way that guy would have been working not at on all. Super Bowl weekend. Not at all. It makes me makes me think how great it is now to be in a position where there's not one single person in this building that can tell me what to do. (laughs) (laughs) 
That no, must you, be nice. Not, yeah. unless, not unless they want to face the friggin' music. <laughs> not one single person in this entire building can tell me what to do. You got to wait till you get home for that. Now with your new wife. Ah! She'll boss you around. Today is Marathon Runner Jesus' ultimate F-off day. Oh, wow. Where is he going? He's going to England. He's going to be dodging diarrhea running the London Marathon. (laughs) That sounds sounds really cool. British diarrhea, a lot of mash and bangers. Yep. Mm -hmm. God, help us. So he's real serious about this marathon gimmick. Yeah, yeah, that's great. Good luck to you. You know, I should have asked him if he's done this one before or this will be new to him. Sounds like a pretty big one. That's incredible. He's hoping to finish within the top hundreds. Oh, wow. That's his goal. Man. God dang. Josh, I'm sorry to cut you off, but I, I, I can't believe I'm mad at myself, and you're going to be mad at yourself, too. We, we spent all this time talking about bad bosses, and not once did we talk about that douchebag Brad. <laughs> Brad's like the worst boss ever. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, you guys probably don't remember Brad. It was, but it's been a bit for years. Yeah, I can't remember. Uh, there's a, a texter started it. His douchebag boss Brad. He hated Brad. Yeah, mm-hmm. and and he he would fit. He would text us about Brad, and he was able to fit it into any any conversation. <laughs> and I remember <laughs> once Brad texted in, was like, "Hey, what's going on? Yeah. I'm not that big of a douchebag." I remember when the guy referred to his boss Brad as an ass hat. Yeah, <laughs> and, and neither one of us at that point in our lives had ever heard of the term ass hat. That's where I learned it. Yeah, I learned it from that. Yeah. <laughs> I learned it from watching you. <laughs> it's also an ultimate f off day for Bush Light bow hunter Jesus, headed to the UP tomorrow with his girlfriend. And also, one more happy birthday shout out to our pal and afternoon guy, Pablo. The 93X Half-Ass Morning Show. 93. The 93X Half-Ass Morning Show podcast is sponsored by Standard Heating and Air Conditioning. New episodes drop each weekday. If your podcast platform has ratings, go ahead and give us five stars and uh, maybe give our enemies one. Thanks, and here's a word from our sponsor. Install a new furnace and AC combo and save up to $3,000 with manufacturer and utility rebates along with Standard Heating's discount. Visit standardheating.com.